be enhanced by its mysterious past. Thomas Wolfe once wrote, you can't go home again. But today, the magic of Ireland has wakened the echoes as Notre Dame's fighting Irish hope to add to their glorious tradition. We're going to get up on the run. We're going to go, 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 go. And we on to the south until we go to that goal line. Don't forget, men, today is the day we're going to win. It's a team used to winning. A team with valiant warriors who serve as golden memories of victory's past. Through the mist, a worthy adversary waits to join in battle. Navy's midshipmen have a tradition of their own. Heroes who have risen to the occasion time and again. Today, the midshipmen of Navy and the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame have come to Ireland to settle the score. ago, head coach Lou Holtz had one of the biggest scares of the season when Navy took the early lead. Things went from bad to worse when quarterback Ron Paulus was knocked down and out. But the Irish still had some fight left and came back with two late touchdowns to steal the victory. This year, Navy has opted its best start in 17 years. And today, they look to soar full steam ahead. The Lou Holtz looks to right the Notre Dame ship. It's Notre Dame and Navy in the Shamrock Classic on CBS. has opened its arms to welcome nearly 20,000 fans from the U.S. and another 25,000 locals to watch Navy and Notre Dame play the first ever American football game at hallowed Croke Park. Navy finds itself as the home team facing the visiting Fighting Irish on Irish soil. And I'm joined by Bill McConkey, captain of the 1978 Navy team, and I have to admit, come clean, I'm a graduate of Notre Dame, so let's exchange hats and try to uh, provide a balanced ticket here this afternoon, Joe. And of course, Notre Dame coming off a of bye week, a loss to Air Force two weeks ago, four and two against the five and one Navy team, and this fighting Irish team having their problems so far, but still, Navy has not beaten them in 32 years. Yeah, it's been a long time, but they think that streak can be ended today, and their optimism is because of an offense that tends to frustrate the opposition. It's part triple option, part run and shoot, and at the helm of that offense is quarterback Chris McCoy. He's Navy's leading rusher with almost 800 yards. Defensively, this unit will attack at all times. It's led by 51, Clint Bruce, and he wears that number in honor of his hero, number 51, Dick Butkus. All right, now, as far as Notre Dame is concerned, that loss to Navy left them at four and two. Even if they win the rest of the way, including a win over Navy, they are still struggling for a bowl appearance. Yeah, it, that's right. This is a must win for Notre Dame today, Tim. A, a second loss to a service academy team could be devastating to this program. Quarterback Ron Powell has told us two weeks ago, Air Force's defense totally confused their offense. And that problem is compounded at right guard due to injury. A freshman reserve defensive tackle, number 77, Brad Williams, gets the start on only a couple days of practice. So we'll be watching for that. Hey, they rolled over Washington. They lost to Air Force. Today's outcome will probably be determined by which Notre Dame team shows up. Well, we'll find out which Notre Dame because here they come now onto the field at Coke Park in Dublin, Ireland. The Fighting Irish trying to turn a visiting game against the home team Navy into the kind of support they would get back at Notre Dame Stadium. And most of the fans who have come from the U.S. are here to support the Fighting Irish.
Shipman at 5 and 1, their best start in 17 years. They're having an outstanding year. They are up and ready, beating off the win by Air Force, another service academy, over and over again. And here they come. And we'll be back for Navy and Notre Dame from Dublin, Ireland's Coke Park. CBS Sports coverage of college football is sponsored by Northwestern Mutual Life. Have you heard from the quiet company? Nissan, who reminds you that life is a journey. Enjoy the ride. And by Nicorette Gum. You can do it. Nicorette can help. So where's our leader? She'll be here. She's meeting with someone about her personal finances. Wait a minute. The chief financial officer needs financial help. From whom? I think he's her life insurance agent. Really? So, what's the agent's name? When you find out, let me know. Have you heard from the quiet company? Northwestern Mutual Life. Everyone, I'm me. So when I decided to quit smoking, I did not choose that one-size-fits-all patch. I chose Nicorette gum. Nicorette has this flexible dosing schedule that helped me control my cravings. It let me use the strength I needed, the amount I needed when I needed it. Nicorette was personal. It fit me. You know, me the non-smoker. Me. Nicorette gum will help you quit smoking successfully by helping you control your cravings. You can do it. Nicorette can help. Introducing McDonald's Deluxe Sandwiches. They're new. They're big. With fresh toppings and a bakery soft roll. The average adult has over 8,000 taste buds. Get ready to use them all. It's McDonald's with a grown-up taste. The Notre Dame Fighting Irish at 4-2. and two. The Navy Midshipmen at 5-1. and one. And let's go down to our reporter joining us here in Dublin, Ireland, Andrea Joyce. Andrea? All right, thanks, Tim. You know, this may look an awful lot like a football field today, but Croke Park has undergone a massive transformation over the last several days. The goalposts were shipped in from Scotland, the scoreboard borrowed from England, and two retired athletic directors were flown in from the States to help them paint the lines on the field. Croke Park is usually home to two very Irish sports. One of them, Gaelic football, is an awful lot like Irish or rather other um, Australian rules football with a little bit of rugby mixed in and the other one is hurling hurling is one of the most ancient team games in the world it's compared to field hockey but really it's a lot faster and a lot more dangerous now as far as the players go this has been a real cultural and educational experience this trip to Ireland but today they're ready to focus on football and as the Irish might say Tim these guys are ready for a real cracker of a game back to you <laughs> all right Andrea a cracker of a game in Indeed, and don't be deceived by the empty seats you see in some of our camera shots because there are about 45,000 people uh, expected here for the game today. This stadium normally seats 75,000 for hurling and Gaelic football. And so uh, much of the seating uh, where the folks from the U.S. have chosen uh, to pay for, pay for their uh, high-priced seats is on our side away from the camera. So do not be deceived. There's a big crowd here in Dublin. Navy will kick it off. And the Fighting Irish in white will return with Dangerous Allen Rossum, number 15, the deep man just outside the goal line. Jason Covarrubias will be kicking it off for the midshipman.
sure you're curious as to the numbers of local fans who came out to the game. They don't know much about it, but as we indicated, about 25,000 from Ireland expected to be here today. And we're underway. Rossum from the end zone. Slip, but he'll bring it out. And Rossum stumbled at the 40-yard line, or he might have gone down the sideline. Instead, is knocked out of bounds by the kicker, Covarubias. A 48-yard return, and it appeared that there was a flag down on the play at the end of it, but we'll check and see as they are at the 45-yard line, spotting where he went out of bounds. It looks like it's against Notre Dame. You usually see penalties. It's on the return team in a kicking situation. Rossum's a guy that returned 199 yards earlier in the season. He took that one about three or four yards deep in the end zone, Tim, and he was backing up, slipped coming out, and it didn't look like he would get much coming out. Illegal block on the receiving team, 10-yard penalty, first out. Illegal block, moves the ball back to the Notre Dame 35-yard line. Ron Paulus comes on to lead the Irish offense, passing at 57%, very consistent. Six touchdown passes, a good week against Air Force in the losing cause, 16 of 24. First and 10 at the 35-yard line of Notre Dame with the penalty on the kickoff return. Slightly greasy field due to rain yesterday. Randy Kinder on the first play picks up about five, and Kinder joined by Mark Edwards at fullback. Malcolm Johnson, Emmett Mosley, the wide outs along with tight end Pete Kriplevich, the tight end. Clevenger, Wisney, Kosinski, and there's Brad Williams, number 77. The freshman at right guard who's over from the defensive team where he was a backup defensive tackle and in. Slot formation to the right on second and five. Kinder again. Hit hard, just over the line of scrimmage, got maybe two. Jervy Alota came up from free safety, number six, to make the hit. Tom Poulter, Chad Holzapfel. Jason Snyder and Michael Ogden across the Navy front. Two linebackers in their alignment, Clint Bruce and Travis Cooley, and then five defensive backs. They are led by Jervy Alota, the junior from San Diego, Sean Andrews and Robert Green on the corners, Kevin Lewis and Rashad Smith with Alota as the safeties. Adam Krishan is in for Kevin Lewis. With the safety position for Navy on third and a long one. Navy has stopped the Irish on the opening series. Bruce puts the hit on Kinder. Yeah, we talked about this guy in the pregame, Tim. Number 51, he likes to play like Dick Butkus. 77, Brad Williams come in pulling. But we had number 51, Bruce, come in and stop the Irish short of a first down. Six feet, 240 pounds, Clint Bruce, but all muscle and all enthusiasm from Garland, Texas. And the Irish will have to punt. Hunter Smith, Hunter in, and Ross Scott, the deep man for Navy, waiting for it at the 15. Flag down. Short punt into the wind. And angles out of bounds at the Navy 36-yard line. Let's see who the flag is against. Just a 21-yard punt from Hunter Smith. Illegal formation against the kicking team, so obviously Navy is going to decline that. They've got good field position at their 36. Chris McCoy brings on to the Naval Academy offense. And Chris McCoy, in his last outing against Wake Forest, rushed for 181 yards. And Notre Dame jumps in quickly, win the drop Navy for a loss on the opening play. Second and ten. McCoy on the option. Again, nowhere to go. 
four Notre Dame defenders into the backfield led by Kenan Tate and the linebacker and Corey Minor, the linebacker on the outside, numbers two and four, to drop McCoy for another loss. See the problems with footing, that's the second time today we've seen a slip. Rossum on the opening kickoff, and right there, Chris McCoy couldn't get going on that option. So third down and 11. McCoy trying the left side, again slipped and stumbled and only got a couple. Maybe we'll have to punt, he's buried there by Kinnan Tatum and this greasy field taking its effect on both teams in the early going. Heavy rains yesterday morning and some rain the day before on Thursday uh, contributing uh, to the slippery field here, both teams having trouble with it. Navy does not like to be in those deep situations on offense. Third and 11 is not conducive to this option run and shoot offense. Jason Covarrubias into punt. Alan Rossum back to receive, waiting for it at the Irish 16-yard line. No score, first period. Good kick with the win from Covarrubias. Fair catch signaled by Rossum. He dropped it, but manages to cover up before the Naval Academy arrives. And so Notre Dame will start from their 21-yard line, a 41-yard punt. No score. Is your danger sending the wrong signals? You're out. Get Selsun Power. Doctors recommend Selsun Blue number one, so don't send the wrong signals. Get Selsun Power. When you're selecting mutual funds, we don't recommend throwing darts. Unless, of course, this is what you're throwing at. The select list, only from Charles Schwab. Come from the over 350 no-load mutual funds we provide. It's an objective, easy-to-use summary of the historically high performers. For a free trial subscription, call 1-800-5-NO-LOAD. It just may help improve your aim. How's your job? Great. There's still a lot of stress, though. You still getting those headaches? Yeah. Yeah, I actually went to the doctor. Mm -hmm. I thought they might be migraines. He said they weren't. He told me to take Tylenol, extra strength. Tylenol? Not some prescription, huh? The Tylenol works great, Dad. More than aspirin, more than ibuprofen. For headaches, doctors recommend Tylenol the most. You should have come to work for me, Julie. Oh, sure. No stress there. Christiana Amanpour, welcome to 60 Minutes. Angela Lansbury, welcome back to Sunday Night. The reporter and the detective doing what they do best, Sunday on 60 Minutes. Honored to the last to three academy game, teams we played, John we H. almost Jones. got beat by Second. Army. Our Air Force did beat us in overtime, and Navy was head of us at halftime last year. This is a very, very good Navy team. It's a Navy team that beat the Air Force Academy, and I am concerned about how well we're going to play. I think that we're ready to play the football game. I think we're anxious to play it. Now it's just a question of how well we play. Uh, since his arrival here in Ireland, uh, Irish coach Lou Holtz gave them a rough and ready workout the other day, and uh, uh, he realizes, obviously, the importance of this game and some concern coming off the loss to Air Force two weeks ago. Audrey Denson in the lineup at running back now, number 23. Kinder had the start today. Denson in the lineup, slot right Notre Dame on first down. Navy angling in and filling those gaps, and... Holding Denson to a gain of about two yards at the most. 
What Navy will try to do is line up and confuse the offense of Notre Dame. This is something that Air Force had a lot of success with last time out. Clint Bruce makes the call, and you saw Ron Paulus check out of that play into a different one, but it still only gained about two yards. Notre Dame with a freshman at right guard, Brad Williams. Mike Rosenthal out for a month with a broken ankle. And here's Denson finding some running room. Autry Denson has a first down to the 35-yard line. Fumble on the and play. A fumble on the play. And it's Notre Dame ball. Kevin Lewis put the hit on Denson. And the ball came loose. And if anything, Lou Holtz talked about was keeping possession of the football. That's right. He's an elusive kind of guy. He's in the doghouse right now. Denson, he slipped by two tackles, laid the ball on the ground, and Lou Holtz will not tolerate that, especially today. That's what he emphasized in his conversation with us, and he's emphasized it with his team. Protect the ball. But it's a first down. Notre Dame just inside their 35-yard line. No score. Opening period. From Croke Park in Dublin, Ireland. trips and he'll just have to cover the ball here to trip over his center's of foot as he started back will be a loss of about three on the play whether he just slipped uh, we're not sure but as we've seen uh, the players are struggling a bit on this greasy turf with all the shifting that Navy does defensively, you would think that Notre Dame might come out with a quick snap situation to keep Navy from shifting or overloading to one side or the other. So Charlie Weatherby, the Navy coach, he's done such a great job, has them off to a five and one start. His second season as head coach at Navy. Second and 13. Edwards alone set back. Three wides to the left side of the field, the short side. Paulus will throw. His receiver slipped and fell down. Johnson, the intended receiver, just slipped on that turf. So this is definitely going to be a factor, Phil. We've seen the problems for all of the players in the early going. On that play, it didn't matter because Robert Green, the cornerback for Navy, they've got great cover guys for Navy with Sean Andrews on the other side, a second-team All-American last year, and Kevin Lewis were over in coverage. They had trips to that side, but the receiver slipped down. Now they send two wide receivers out to the right on third down and 13. Hollis has lots of time, and he finds his man is dropped incomplete. Incomplete pass. Denson couldn't hold on. He was open out of the backfield. Would not have had first down yardage. Two Navy defenders were right there to drop him. So Notre Dame will have to punt. Good protection that time for Paulus. He had nowhere to go with the ball. Navy lined up in a man situation at the last second, shifted out of it, dropped back into his zone, and Kevin Lewis was all over the potential receiver on that play. Hunter Smith into punt for the Irish. Ross Scott waiting for it at the Navy 25. Good low drive. Excellent punt into the wind. Scott tried to catch it. And on his second attempt was able to cover. But back at the 12-yard line of Navy. And they'll start deep in their own end when we return. No score. So I hear he's moving to the corner office. How's he do it? I don't know. Yesterday he spent an hour with some life insurance guy. That's good time management? Well, Winters gave the agent his name. Winters? As in CEO? Mm hmm How's he do it? Hmm. Have you heard from the quiet company? Northwestern Mutual Life. You're born, you go to school, and then one day, things begin to get interesting. Where there was once only a wall, there appears a door. You take a deep breath and walk through to the other side. Things are very different here. Now, instead of preparing, you're doing. Instead of waiting, you're moving. The stakes are a lot higher than they were in high school. Because out here, the tests you're given are of your honor, your courage, and your commitment. This is your journey. It's time you got underway. Call 1-800-227-5050. 
1-800-USA-NAVY. Let the journey begin. CBS Sunday, November 17th. Discover the truth behind the disaster. Here's God. They said couldn't happen. Who will survive Titanic? Back in Dublin, no score in the first quarter. Earlier today, the teams were very concerned about the slippery field conditions. It's been raining a lot in Dublin the last few days. And so the helicopter came through this morning and dried off the field. It is a lot drier than it was yesterday. We were slopping through mud. And I have to tell you, you got to believe, Tim, that they got a little bit of advice from the New York Yankees. They used this tactic during the World Series. Back to you guys. Thanks, Andrea. Navy. Uh Scott had a problem with the greasy field, trying to retrieve that punt. Tim Canada on first down from his 12-yard line gets a couple out near the 15. Tim Canada, a junior from Trustville, Alabama, number 26. And a gain of about three, it looks like. Second and seven from the 15-yard line. Ross Scott trying to catch up with that line drive punt, a good one from Hunter Smith to Notre Dame. And uh, he slipped and nearly lost the ball deep in his own end. Corey Shem into the lineup, number 20. Senior from Cheektowaga, New York. And one of the slot back positions for the Naval Academy. McCoy fake the handoff and he's buried again as the Irish are exploding through the offensive front of Navy. Burt Berry, Ronaldo Wynn, and Kinnan Tatum all in on that tackle. Yeah, the strength of this Notre Dame team is their front seven. Burt Berry leads Notre Dame in sacks with five and a half this year. He had three in one game against Washington. They're going to come. They know that the field is bad. Defense maybe. Some team people say that the offense has the advantage. I'm not sure if anybody has an advantage on this type of a field. So it's now third and 13 for Navy. McCoy rolling deep downfield into traffic and it's broken up. Intended for butts and broken up by Deke Cooper, the safety number one. McCoy gets one right under the chin that time by Ronaldo Wynn. And that's a situation, again, Navy does not like to be third and long. They were third and 11 on the last series, third and 13 on that one. It's very difficult for this offense to convert in that situation. Jason Covarrubias will have to punt from the end zone now on fourth down. Rossum waiting for it at midfield on the 50-yard line. And they've got Denson in. After uh, Lou Holt said Rossum would return all the punts, he's got Denson in there. Denson shakes loose, starts to the sideline, and gets inside the 45 down to the 41-yard line of Navy. David Joseph Forsky, the linebacker, forced him out there. And we'll be back in Dublin, still no score, with 7.09 to go first quarter. Trust. We are not born with an instinct to trust. Trust must be earned. Trust must be proven. We earn it with integrity. We prove it with sound advice. Trust is the ultimate measure of our success. And at Dean Witter, we measure success one investor at a time. College Football Today Power Poll, sponsored by Nissan, who reminds you that life is a journey. Enjoy the ride. 
You know, we're sitting here thinking anybody can do a power pull, right? We're going to do a special teams power pull. Let's take a look at it. Yeah, not too many kickers in this poll either. Florida State, they're a ball club that's 6-0 because of a great all-balanced ball club. Miami wins because last week they blocked the punt. Virginia, Tiki Barber is their punt return ace. Iowa has the best special teams player in the country and Tim Dwight. And Syracuse, they always are blocking kicks out there. When your offense and defense aren't working, those special teams. Speaking of special teams, let's go back to our own special team led by Tim Ryan. Tim Ryan with Phil McConkey in Dublin, Ireland. Notre Dame and Navy scoreless. First quarter, 7.09 to go. Notre Dame with a first down at the 43-yard line of Navy after Denson's 13-yard return of the punt from the end zone. Denson and Edwards, the running backs, and Denson is buried at the line of scrimmage. There'll be no gain. Michael Ogden, the defensive end, number 92, with the first contact for Navy. Yeah, they're running to the right side, 77. Shad Brad Williams, a guy we talked about earlier, a freshman reserve defensive lineman. He's only had a couple days of practice on offense. I don't understand how the guy can understand any of the assignments. Mike Rosenthal injured against Air Force, out for a month with an ankle injury. Jeremy Akers on the left side playing hurt with a shoulder. Jerry Wisney got the start there today. Shuffle pass. Edwards. Down Notre Dame to the 30 yard line of Navy. Travis Cooley made the hit. Number 50 for the Naval Academy. Yeah, Lou Holtz is going to play it very conservatively today, especially on this field. Dropping back, everybody thinking pass just shovels it off. A missed tackle by Adam Creshawn, and Mark Edwards comes up with the first down. One good thing about that play, if it goes on the ground, it's just an incomplete pass. You don't have to worry about the fumble. And you saw Brad Williams, the rookie right guard there, doing the blocking job on that side of the field. Notre Dame in Navy territory, first down at the 30. Jamie Spencer in at fullback for Edwards for Notre Dame, number 33. This is Denson. Denson has a hole, digs hard, and gets down to the 21-yard line. Close to another Irish first down. Robert Green, the cornerback, number 21, made the tackle. Lou Holtz kind of football. What he wants to do is power the ball, play smash mouth football. They go right up the middle that time. Audrey Denson's their leading rusher, but he's been in the doghouse, like we said before. He's come up big a couple times this afternoon, and we'll get to see just how much Lou Holtz lets him on the field. Denson, the sophomore from Lauder Hill, Florida, was a fan of the Florida State Seminoles growing up. Came to Lou Holtz and said, I'm another Warwick Dunn. They had him on defense. He wanted to play offense. Edwards, the ball carrier, gets about two yards, but certainly enough for the first down inside the 20. Notre Dame into the red zone for the first time today. Clint Bruce made the tackle. Lou Holtz said that Brad Williams gives them the best chance to win. They have a couple other reserve offensive linemen, but for some reason, he decided to take this guy, who's only 265 pounds, but Lou says he's a very strong guy and he's a quick learner, obviously. Freshman from Orange, California, number 77. In motion is Mosley. They go back the other way with Denson. Denson trying to shake loose and does. To the five-yard line, Autry Denson, driven out by Sean Andrews. First and goal. Yeah, he's their playmaker, Autry Denson, getting some time right now, running back. Just a simple sweep to the right, missed tackles, and he outruns a couple guys. That's Sean Andrews, second-team All-American for Navy, that saves the touchdown. Well, you talked about him being in the doghouse, and Lou Holtz, without saying it directly, just indicating that he hadn't been doing the blocking and doing all of the other things besides running well with the ball that uh, have been asked of him, but he's a dangerous runner when he has it in his hands. First and goal. Edwards crashing to the goal line. fullback from Norwood, Ohio, scoring for Notre Dame. Notre Dame has about a 50-pound advantage on the average across that offensive line, and they powered that time, but most of it was on the back of Mark Edwards. He carried a couple guys into the end zone. Jim Sanson in for the point after, and it is good. 
So with four minutes and 40 seconds remaining in the first quarter, Notre Dame has opened the scoring. Here it is again. Pretty good penetration by the Navy defense on the fringes that time, but he's just powered into the end zone. He got a lot of help that time, did uh, Mark Edwards, by number 33, Jamie Spencer. 7-0 Notre Dame. sister did without for years to make this business work. Some morning she'd wake up, her back felt ready for a wrecking ball. She'd take two Tylenol, but hours later, pain had come back. She'd have to take more. She couldn't take it any longer. So her doctor said try a leave. I could take just two a leave all day. With Tylenol, I was taking up to eight. So she tried a leave. Keeps her pain away up to 12 hours. It's meant a great deal to her. Who did your hair? A leave. All day strong, all day long. Tim Ryan and Phil McConkie here in Dublin, Ireland, where Notre Dame has opened the scoring after Navy had to punt from their end zone. A 13-yard return by Autry Denson to the Navy 41, and Notre Dame marched it in for a five-yard touchdown by Mark Edwards. 43 yards in six plays, using up 229 on the clock and a 7-0 lead. Go Hunter back for Navy. Returning the kickoff out over the 30 yard line. Sanson's kickoff return to the 31. And Astor Heaven, the return man on that somewhat short kickoff, just an eight yard return. Mark Edwards is a wide receiver, gets to the 32-yard line. Mark Phil. Edwards is a guy that Lou Holtz said can play in the era without face masks. He can run, he can block, and he can catch. And he's a good kid. We talked to him the other day. Able Academy first down. And McCoy again buried before he can make a move. Option so far has been ineffective for Navy on offense. Burt Berry and Ronaldo win again just sifting through to Barry McCoy before he can make a play. 49 rushing yards for the Irish, minus two for Navy. Yeah, that is very surprising right there. Navy's the third-ranked rushing team in the country, Notre Dame, number 18. But so far, Notre Dame has got this triple option run-and-shoot offense figured out. Navy rushed for 463 yards in their win over Wake Forest last week, 47-18. This is McGrew, and nowhere for him to go. Got back to the original line of scrimmage for a gain of only about a yard, a flag on the play. Probably holding on Navy. They're having trouble with the penetration of Notre Dame. Kinnon Tatum made the stop. And the infraction against Navy. Referee is Randy Sims. When we were out of practice the other day, Lou spent almost the entire practice with the offense. Bob Davey, the coordinator of the defense, were over on the side, and they seemed a bit more relaxed than the offense. I guess with Lou over getting on the offense, it's a little, little easier for them in practice. Yeah, I think that's a very good observation. Whatever Bob Davey did for them today, or did uh, during the week, they seem to have their assignments down pat. Maybe that extra week to prepare for this game has them working their assignments to perfection this, thus far. 15-yard penalty against Navy, a chop, chop block called against the Naval Academy, and the midshipmen are backed up to their 17-yard line. Second down and 23 yards to go. McCoy has a man open. Connects to Corey Shem. He's hit immediately. 
Gain of about six yards on the play. Benny Gilbo, number 39, made the hit. It'll leave third and long for Navy. Now the ball at their 27-yard line. Make it the 22-yard uh, line. Benny Gilbo, the sophomore. Strong safety from Opelousas, Louisiana. Having a good season for the Fighting Irish, where safety has been a soft spot through the first six games. McCoy, quarterback draw, ran into his own man and then is stuffed by Corey Bennett, number 95. Junior from Doraville, Georgia, just into the game on defense this series. And the Naval Academy forced once again to punt. Well, they know they've got Navy down when it's third down and 20. The defensive front for Notre Dame just created a stalemate at the line of scrimmage, thinking that Chris McCoy would try something like that draw against them. Jason Covarubias into punt. Alan Rossum now back on the field to return. He's waiting for it at the 35-yard line. A high snap and a good recovery by Covarubias and a dandy punt. Rossum feels it at the 32. Alan Rossum all the way down to the 25-yard line of Navy. Matt Scanlon finally pushed him out right in front of the Notre Dame bench where he receives a huge welcome. On his second punt return in college football, Rossum returned to punt 57 yards against Air Force. He almost lost it there. Another missed tackle by Navy, and the kicker, Covarubias, saves a touchdown as he did in the Air Force game a couple weeks ago for Navy, and it could have been the difference in the game. They spotted at the 27-yard line, first down, Notre Dame, 1.58 to go first quarter. Mosley in motion behind the ball. Denson gets it over the 25 to about the 24-yard line. Clint Bruce and Jervy Alota, the two strong men, that Navy defense behind the front. Bruce the leader and leader ta leading in tackles with 57. 38 of them solo, the senior from Garland, Texas. Spencer in the lineup at fullback for Notre Dame, number 33, Jamie Spencer, replacing Mark Edwards on second and seven. They give us to Denson, shakes off a tackle, pulled down from behind, it gets inside the 20. Rashad Smith at the Navy tackle. Navy came on the blitz that time. This game is developing into a field position game, Tim, with the field as slippery as it is, Navy's offense not being able to get on track. They're in a lot of third and long situations. A couple returns, and Notre Dame gets good field position, and they're down to the Navy 20, knocking on the door once more. Edwards back in at fullback for the Fighting Irish, number 44. Denson now has 45 yards rushing on seven carries, and he made that key punt return of 14 yards, setting up the opening score. This is Edwards, he's got a big hole. Mark Edwards to the six yard line and running behind the freshman guard, Brad Williams. Jervy Alona made the tackle. You're right, Tim. Brad Williams, the right guard, number 77, just decks his guy, pancakes him into the ground, allowing the running back, Mark Edwards, a big hole on that right side. Boy, you got this guy is a quick learner. I can't imagine he could even remember the plays. <laughs> Only after a couple days on the offensive line. Well, Lou Holtz was very confident. He said, we like this young man's athletic ability. We've got an injury to Rosenthal. We're going with him. Denson, traffic this time. Navy stacking it up in the middle and nowhere to run. He got maybe a yard to the five-yard line. What you want to do on a field like this today, Tim, is try to run straight ahead as often as you can. We've reached the end of the first quarter. CBS Sports coverage of college football will continue from Croke Park in Dublin after this message and a word from your local station. At Michelin, we believe a tire that's just good in the rain isn't good enough. The Michelin X1, with a six-year unlimited mileage tread life warranty, gives you better wet traction than any rain tire. 
plus Michelin confidence in most driving conditions. It has to, because the way we see it, you don't just cover a lot of miles, you cover a lot of weather. The Michelin X1. You've been thinking about getting a digital satellite dish, and thinking, and thinking some more. Well, think about this. The people at Radio Shack can answer your questions. Plus, now they've got great deals. Own an RCA brand DSS dish with programming for about a dollar a day plus installation. Up to 200 channels of select movies and sports available on USSB and DirecTV. Think about it. Better yet, stop thinking about it. Radio Shack, you've got questions, we've got answers. CBS, welcome home. Honda invented the ATV, and no one has ever taken the idea farther. Now get a Magellan GPS satellite navigator with the purchase of a 4 tracks 300 or 300 4x4 to help bring you back. And with any new Honda 4 tracks, no down payment and 13.5% APR financing. Visit your participating Honda dealer now. Do you want to watch? Or do you want to move? Jump into life right now at Valley Total Fitness for just a dollar down and less than a dollar a day. No high down payments, no other startup fees. Call 1-800-FITNESS and get started. Just a dollar down and less than a dollar a day. That's probably less than you spend on water. Sure, you need water to live, but you need to be fit to live life hard. Call Valley Total Fitness now. It's only a dollar down and less than a dollar a day. Don't just watch life. Jump in and live. Carol Keaton Rylander, standing for Texas. America must never be held hostage by any Middle East Ayatollah ever again. I'm working for energy independence, replacing foreign crude with our Texas oil and gas. To create Texas jobs, Carol's promoting environmentally clean natural gas. She's fighting to abolish the U.S. Energy Department, saving $20 billion. Carol set an example, cutting her budget 10% and staff 12%, saving taxpayers $11 million. Carol Keaton Rylander, conservative leadership for Texas future. See you Monday morning on the area's only live 6 a.m. sportscast. Back in Croke Park, Notre Dame leads Navy at the end of the first quarter, 7-0. There are a lot of Irish fans here. 6,000 of them bought tickets on the very first day, even though they are completely baffled by American football. How confused are they? Here are the top three questions asked of the American football players this week. Number one, does the winner of this game go to the Super Bowl? Number two, do the fighting Irish really fight? And number three, do you have to be good at kickboxing to be good at Football. Needless to say, Tim, they're very interested in the bands and the cheerleaders. They're looking forward to halftime. Back to you guys. <laughs> well, you know, there was a very amusing piece in the Irish Times this morning about the pep rally. That was something else they didn't know much about. The writer, a clever one in the uh, Irish Times, had a lot of fun. In fact, he referred to the leprechaun here as a Darby O'Gill character. <laughs> And he said uh, his his role at the pep rally was to buy against that big ram, a giant ram, the mascot of Navy, in an effort to uh, whip up mutual hatred between the two teams. <laughs> They're having great fun with this whole experience here. They don't have to rely on the mascots for that today. No, they sure don't. Notre Dame knocking on the door, second and goal from the five. Hollis rolling left. He's got a man wide open. Rick Levitz, the tight end, touchdown. Long history of great tight ends at Notre Dame. Ken McAfee, Mark Bavaro, Tony Hunter, Derek Brown, and Pete Kriplevich. Number 98, he's a big target out there. Now, Lou hasn't relaxed yet, but that's a good start for Notre Dame. Just into the second quarter, and Sanson's point after now will make it 14 to nothing for the Fighting Irish. He gets rolling out to the left that time. The Navy players, both linebackers, fall over each other trying to find, figure out what's going on. Kaplevich is just wide open. Nobody around him. 14 to nothing now for the Irish. Like that account I told you about? He's great. Helped out, huh? Did me a huge favor. What was that? Gave my name to his life insurance agent. Didn't do that.
that for me. Have you heard from the Quiet Company? Northwestern Mutual Life. I heard someone say, what will they think of next? And I thought, how wonderful it is to imagine that someone is out there thinking of things. And that's their job, to think of something that no one has ever thought of. And all we have to do is wait and wonder, what will they think of next? The Chrysler Cirrus, Concord, and LHS, bringing what's next from the cab forward engineering of Chrysler. Their goals are as basic as a first home, an education, a secure retirement. Yet they own over half of all the stock in America. They are individual investors, and for them, nothing is more valuable than information. Today, NASDAQ is delivering news about companies, performance tracking, even tiny stock quotes, instantly. So if you're an investor who seeks vital information, you now know where to find it. They'll be just one bite from this guy could be deadly, so what if you want to pick it up? It's enough to rattle anyone's nerves, especially mine. Secrets of Snake Handling, Monday at 6. Bill McConkey, we're at Croke Park in Dublin, and Notre Dame has opened a 14 to nothing lead in the opening minute of the second period. A five-yard touchdown pass from Ron Paulus to Kuplevich. 28 yards and five plays for the Irish. Sanson will kick it off. Hunter is the deep man at the goal line for Navy. Big crowd on hand here at Croke Park, a stadium that seats 76,000 normally for its curling and Gaelic football action. First ever American college football game played here on this field. There have been two other games played here in Dublin. And it comes down right at the goal line, and Rico Hunter will bring it up for the Naval Academy. And he's got good blocking. And Hunter all the way out to the 35-yard line. Good return for Navy. 34 yards. Bobby Howard, reserve linebacker, made the tackle. Navy's biggest play of the day. Enrico Smith returning the kickoff, 34 yards. His up men give him great support, leading the way, breaking the tackle. And again, on this field, you want to go up north and south. Don't make a cut, because you'll probably slip. Ben Fay has come in at quarterback for Navy, replacing Chris McCoy here early in the second quarter. And it is Tim Canada, the fullback, struggling for maybe three on the play. Canada, the junior from Trussville, Alabama. You know, Navy will switch quarterbacks no matter what the score is. Ben Fay may not be a, as good a runner as Chris McCoy, but he can really throw the ball. In fact, Bob Davies said he's got as strong as arm as anybody they've seen all year long. 6'1", 202-pound senior from Fort Worth, Texas. Delightful young man. We had a chance to meet him and Chris McCoy. And he makes the pitch as he took the hit. And it's McGrew who gets the first down. Good effort by Fay and McGrew for Navy. And a good block on the corner. Ronaldo Wynn knocked him out of bounds. Fay just about slips on the ground just before his knee hits. And his knee may have hit. That may have been, should have been a dead ball right there as his knee hit. Because I think he pitched the ball after his knee was on the ground. But anyway, it's a first down for Navy. And their first of the game. With 14.08 to go in the second period. First down at the 46-yard line of the Naval Academy. Fay rolling right. Gets protection. Sideline pass intended for Butts is out of bounds incomplete. LeBron Butts, number 84, the intended receiver. Fay may have elected to throw that one away. Yeah, it looks like they're playing on ice skates out there. The receiver's trying to make cuts. They're slipping down. Fay trying to plant. He slips and just gets rid of the ball. I believe second and 10 for Navy. I think one thing we can safely say when we talk to... Uh, I think we can safely say when we talk to uh, these players in the last few days that uh, they're just a really fine group of young men on both teams. That's Canada on the pitch from Faye, but a flag down before uh, the play even started. Cobbins made the tackle, but I believe that play is just going to come back. 
may have been delay against uh, the Naval Academy, a little slow getting the play off. Andy Sims, the referee, will give us a call. team in the country is having its problems today obviously against the fighting Irish and it was a uh, delay of game as they just didn't get the playoff in time so it's second and 15 back at the 41 yard line now of the midshipmen their spread offense Faye hit before he could do anything Notre Dame has been shredding the Navy offensive line Corey Miner this time and Bob Davies said that they would be probably a little tentative, maybe react, but so far today, they're on the attack. Corey Miner just comes in and levels Faye, and this Notre Dame defense right now is playing with a lot of confidence. They're not too worried about what Navy's doing like they thought they might be going into this game. They are just charging full speed ahead. Navy smaller along the defensive front, but actually uh, sizable on offense with the exception of the right tackle, Scott Zimmerman, who's only 245, but Notre Dame has been dominating. Will run out of there. Couldn't find a man open and picked up the original yardage lost back to the 46 yard line, but it'll be fourth down. Alton Maiden and Ronaldo Wynn made the tackle. Jason Covarubius into punt for Navy. Standing at his 32 yard line. Denson waiting for it. The 24 of Notre Dame. Navy kicking into the wind now in this second quarter. Low short punt caught by Denson. Fair catch at the 28 yard line. CBS Sports coverage of college football will continue after this word from your local station. CBS, welcome home. Serious damage to your engine can happen during startups when your engine is cold. So for a motor oil to protect your engine, it must get to work fast. Exxon Superflow Synthetic Blend does. It also protects better against thermal breakdown, yet is less expensive than full synthetics. A difference you can see. Exxon Superflow Synthetic Blend. Protection beyond conventional oils. Coffee tables, two in tables and lamps from just four ninety nine. Southwest style, five ninety nine. Traditional style, six ninety nine. Or an overstuffed loose pillow look, seven ninety nine. But that's not all. Take home a complete coffee and end table set, just forty nine bucks. Spiderland, a low seventy seven bucks plus immediate delivery and easy credit. Expect more for less price. Furniture factory warehouse. For the most bargains under one roof, shop the Texas Thrift Store. There's a wide selection of clothing, electronics, toys, furniture, books, and household items for the whole family, all at a fraction of their original cost. Come check out the daily specials and save even more. Be a bargain hunter and look for even greater savings. And with thousands of items arriving every day, you'll shop a new store every time you walk in. Remember, you'll always save more at Texas Thrift Store. Texas Thrift Store in the Northwest Plaza Shopping Center on Fredericksburg Road. Look first results and more local races. Election coverage on Eyewitness News. Well, there's a statue of uh, Andrea Joyce's uh, uncle, uh, James, the literary legend uh, most closely associated with Dublin. Lived here from, uh, from 1882 to 1941. And, of course, uh, famous for Ulysses and many other fine works of literature. A genuine Irish hero that's in downtown Dublin. Wrote much of Ulysses in a famous pub called Davy Jones, which is still here. 14 to nothing. Fighting Irish. Lead Navy. 12.25 to go in the first half. First down Irish at their own 28-yard line. Denson shakes off one tackle. A flag is down as he struggles over the 35 to the 36-yard line. Picked up nearly eight on the play, but let's see what the call is from referee Randy Sims. Ogden made the tackle. Number 92. Ogden and Joseph Orsky, the flag on the play. 
Denson's a guy that, do that doesn't seem to have too much trouble with the footing today. We've seen him slip tackles, make cuts, and stay on his feet. I don't know if he's got longer cleats on or what's going on with Denson, but uh, he's getting upfield pretty well today. He's got eight carries, 47 yards. And we've still got some time left in the first half. They're marching it off against the Irish. So his good run will come back. Holding is the call against the Irish. And that backs it up to the 21 yard line. First down over again, first and 17. Lone setback is Edwards. Four receivers in this set. And Paulus just runs it straight ahead. For no gain. Navy ready for that. Tom Poulter, defensive end number 99, made the tackle. Well, that's a strange play right there. They line up four guys at the wide receiver position to loosen up Navy a little bit. And they've got a running back, big running back in the backfield, but they elect to go with Paulus on the sneak, and it didn't fool Navy at all. Second down, 16 yards to go. Hollis got just a yard on that quarterback sneak attempt. Here comes the blitz, and they get Hollis. He holds on to the ball, but it was Robert Green, the quarterback. And Paulus, uh, that would be a nightmare situation. Uh, he got nailed like that against Air Force in overtime. It led to the winning score. Field goal by Air Force that won it. That came from his blind side. Robert Green came in. He didn't see him to the last second. Boy, they're lucky they held on to the ball that time. Robert Green with a big play that backs up the Irish. Paulus, a good job there to hang on to that football and a great defensive effort by Robert Green. He started to come a little early when the fullback shifted, had to get back on, on his line of scrimmage, but you knew he was coming all the way. Now they're backed up third and 25 at the 12-yard line. Hollis steps up, sideline pass. It's caught by Mosley. And he gets back to the original line of scrimmage, but well short of the first down. Got to the 28-yard line, fourth down. But what that does for Notre Dame, that's a 15-yard completion. They're still 11 yards short of the first down, but this is a game of field position today. And that's 15 yards further that Navy's going to have to come back to get a score. So even though it didn't successfully get a first down, it was a good play for Notre Dame. Hunter Smith will punt. He's standing at his 14-yard line. Ross Scott waits for it at the Navy 19. Catch signal at the 35. Good field position for the Naval Academy down 14 to nothing when we return. I'll buy 10 of these. You're Deion Sanders. Deion Sanders? <laughs> it's him. <laughs> You're the greatest, man. Mind if I get a picture? Thanks, bro. You mind if I write a check? Sure, Dion. I'm just going to need to see some ID. Say what? Yes, like driver's license, a library card. Checks. What a pain. Is this your license? Employee ID. But now there's a better way. The Visa Check Card. It's an ATM card with a Visa logo that deducts from your checking account automatically everywhere Visa's accepted. I'm going to have to call to see if you can cover this. The Visa Check Card. Works just like a check, only better. <laughs> It's at home, anywhere. MFS invented the mutual fund in 1924. By the time Portaway thundered to the Triple Crown, we'd been in the race for 17 years. MFS, we invented the mutual fund.
Pat O'Brien live in the New York studios. Coming up on the College Football Today Halftime Report. All the plays and highlights from a big day in college football. Craig James will be here. We'll talk about this play. Miami's special teams continue to shine. Tremaine Mack, the hero of last week's game, blocks his ninth kick in the last two years. And Earl Little brings it back 74 yards for the Canes. Temple, 1-35 all-time in Big East play, is hanging in there. They've added a touchdown now. They're up 20 to 17. A live update for you. Let's go back to our pre-recorded game. Notre Dame leading Navy 14 to nothing. 9.39 to go in the first half. Chris McCoy has returned at quarterback for the Naval Academy. Ben Fay worked the last series for them. And they have just been unable to get anything going offensively. We mentioned uh, the third best rushing team in the country, averaging 306 yards. A game with 463 against Wake Forest last week, but they've been unable to run on this greasy field against an overpowering Notre Dame defense to this point. Three receivers to the left for Navy on first down. And it's McGrew met as soon as he caught the ball coming up from the safety position. Deke Cooper, the freshman from Evan Indiana stopping Pat McGrew yeah right now they're just bringing guys up everybody knows their assignments from Notre Dame Cooper just goes right to the pitch guy he knew who his guy was from the start of that play they're taking away all three options right now they're taking away the fullback the quarterback and the pitch man Notre Dame doing a great job of recognition loss of up nearly two yards on the play second and 12 Boy comes to the left, nowhere to go, buried again. Lost another couple of yards. Kinnon Tatum, the senior linebacker number two with the tackle. How about all these linebackers for Notre Dame with these single-digit numbers? These are big guys who weigh 240, 50 pounds, and they're wearing number two and number four. It doesn't <laughs> seem right, Tim. <laughs> no, it does look funny. I agree. Tatum there, number two. Corey Miner, four. Leron Cobbins, their leading tackler, wears number six. Third and 14. Navy now and. Five third down situations. Everything's been third and ten or longer. McCoy complete to heaven, short of the first down. Over the 40-yard line, they'll spot it at the 41 before he was driven back. Benny Gilbo made the tackle. That's Aster Heaven, senior from Lugoff, South Carolina. But again, the Naval Academy will have to punt. You've got to keep an eye on Charlie Weatherby, the coach of Navy. He's a really optimistic, hard-charging guy. And he's got a full bag of tricks in his arsenal. And he'll pull one off at any time, including a, a fourth and three and a fake punt. So you always got to watch out for him. And you called it. Jervy Aloto, the safety. Did he get the first down? Looks like he did. Jervia Loda on the punt unit. Their starting free safety has a first down Navy. So the trick play works. Yeah, he'll try to jumpstart his team any way he can. Jervia Loda, safety from San Diego, California. Last second effort gets the first down. You know, this guy came in last year. Everybody else thought it was Tom O'Brien, a former Naval Academy player and assistant coach, who's with George Wells at Virginia. Weatherby came in last second. Everybody was shocked, but sure, he sure has won over a lot of fans with his coaching these last two years. And a 5-1 and one record, and McCoy is hit by Miner, but the ball had already been handed off, and it is Nelson picking up about six yards. Omar Nelson, the senior fullback from Silver Spring, Maryland, and it'll leave second and three. McCoy paid a heavy price for a good fake. Well, that's part of running this option series. McCoy's got almost 800 yards running the football. Corey Miner decks him on that play, but Omar Nelson and Tim Canada combined have rushed for over 700 yards for this Navy team. Second and a long three for Navy inside Notre Dame territory at the 47-yard line. And the pitch to Ross Scott. And Scott has a first down, Navy. 
to the 41 yard line. So finally, the midshipmen have it on the move. Benny Gilbo and Deke Cooper made the tackle for the Irish. Yeah, we talked about this offense being very unusual, and it sure is that a triple option and combination run and shoot. They'll line up with Ross Scott, Pat McGrew, Corey Shem, and Will Smith in the slot back position. And these guys play like wide receivers, tight ends, running backs, and fullbacks, and they do a variety of things. From the, from the Notre Dame 41, McCoy rolling, wants to throw. Nobody there takes a tough hit and is knocked out of bounds, losing about a yard on the play. Kinnan Tatum knocked him out. He had a man open deep. Yeah, LeBron Butts beat the coverage. Number one, D. Cooper, he got behind him. But unfortunately for Navy, McCoy just didn't have enough time, and he took another big hit. Backed up a yard to the Notre Dame 43-yard line now. 6.18 to go, first half. Notre Dame on top, 14 to nothing. Tim Ryan and Phil McConkey from Cook Park in Dublin, Ireland, home of Irish football. And Hurley. And it's Omar Nelson. And a 360 move by the quarterback, McCoy. Inside handoff to Nelson. Yeah, this is an offense that's very confusing for the defense. Even though they're big up front for Notre Dame, the offensive line doesn't have to get good big pushes and group guys out. They just kind of shield the defense, get out in front of them, and create some seams for the running backs. And Omar Nelson runs up, and Navy's with a third and six here. Nelson with 498 yards rushing coming into the game today. Had two touchdowns again against Wake Forest in the win last week. Third down and six and flags before the ball is snapped. Things that slow this offense down obviously are turnovers, but mistakes can kill you. You go from third and six to third and 11. David Loya. Repeat third down. Picked up the penalty, and you can see Charlie Weatherby uh, giving him what for. That's the third penalty against the midshipman, 24 yards. Weatherby got Loya right out of there, and Zimmerman back in. That right tackle for Navy. So that makes it third and 11. McCoy, straight drop this time. For heaven, he's open, and he's got a first down. Navy dragging the defender to the 20-yard line. Ivory Covington finally pulls him down. 22-yard pass play. Good pressure that time on Chris McCoy, but he's a quick guy, and he's got a pretty good release. Navy taking an advantage of a mismatch in the defensive backfield. Heaven is six foot two inches, and Covington's only about 5'8". So he uses his big body to shield the smaller defender and come up with the big pass catch. That's one advantage that Navy will try to exploit this afternoon. Midshipman first down at the Irish 21-yard line. Play action and flags again. Whistling the play dead before it gets started. Some kind of motion penalty, we assume. Navy had a costly one moments ago. This is Randy Sims marking it off. The referee, tenth play of this drive for Navy. Start on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat first down. Another false start charged against the midshipman. Last time, McCoy was able to get it right back with that completion to heaven. And now he's got first and 15 from the 25-yard line of Notre Dame. Navy in blue, the Irish in white. Again, that inside handoff, Omar Nelson. And he gets back to the 20-yard line of Notre Dame before LaRon Cobbins puts the stop on him there. That'll leave second and about 10. Corey Miner that time, his responsibility is the quarterback. He's not looking at anybody else, just tackle the quarterback. McCoy handed the ball off to Omar Nelson, but again, he took a big shot from Corey Miner. Cobbins with the tackle on Nelson. Second and 10 for the 20-yard line of Notre Dame. 4.14 to go first half. Notre Dame up 14 to nothing. Nelson takes the fake and the pitch outside to Scott. And Scott gets inside the 15 to about the 13-yard line. Another flag on the play. And it's down near the end of the play. Oh. 
And it's signaled against Navy. So a good seven or eight yard run is negated. See what the call is from Randy Sims. Characteristically for Navy, they've been committing a lot of penalties. That's their fourth for 39 yards in this half. And again, that's what can slow down this multiple offense, penalties and turnovers. They're hurting themselves by not playing disciplined football. So these penalties costly to the midshipmen. It's second and 14 now. Play action, McCoy complete to Bucks and a first down Navy at the six yard line of Notre Dame. 3.39 to go first half. It'll be first and goal Navy. LeBron butts number 84, just comes down. He gets good footing right here, makes the plant of his right foot, comes back to the ball. You don't see that the defender, Alan Rossum, number 15, he slipped on the play, enabling Navy to come through with the conversion. Howard and Rossum on the tackle, but Navy knocking at the door, trying to get on the board here in the first half in Dublin. First and goal. Touchdown, Omar Nelson. That inside handoff to the fullback has been their most effective play in the drive. And the senior fullback takes it on into the end zone. And the Navy fans react. You got first classmen down there doing push-ups. Usually the plebes get to do that at Navy. But this trip, only the upper class get to make it all the way over here to Ireland. Vanderhorst for the point after. And it is good. Boy, the plebes back, back at Annapolis are having a big kick out of seeing the upper class do, do push-ups after that score. So Navy has cut the margin to seven points. Notre Dame leads 14 to seven with 319 to go first half. Omar Nelson for the score. consistent thing about your oven is its inconsistency, then it's definitely time for the remarkable new Whirlpool range. The one with the AccuBake system, so food always cooks evenly. Lots of food, too, because only Whirlpool has a range with an oven this big. At Whirlpool, we make cooking easier and more pleasantly consistent. Whirlpool, making your world a little easier. Trying to quit smoking cold turkeys like falling off a cliff. Suddenly, there's nothing holding you up. But Nicorette gum was my lifeline. It let me down gently, one craving at a time, till I needed less and less and less and none. Listen, if quitting is a cliff, Nicorette is a parachute. If you want to stop smoking, Nicorette gum can increase your chance of success by helping control your cravings. And now it's available without a prescription. You can do it. Nicorette can help. This week on Dave, Mel Gibson, Christine Lottie, Marissa Tomei, John Michael Montgomery, Brett Butler, and Friday from D.C., Ted Koppel and Mary Chapin Carpenter. This week on CBS. Pat O'Brien in New York with a roller coaster game of the hour. Miami has gone back on top versus Temple. I was leading 20 to 17. Now a Miami seven yard pass from Ryan Clement to Chris Jones. Temple, 1 and 35 all time in the Big East. He's hanging in there though, 24 20. Let's go back to Ireland. Tim Ryan and Phil McConkie in Dublin, Ireland. Navy getting onto the scoreboard with 319 to go in the half on a six-yard touchdown run by senior fullback Omar Nelson. 66 yards in 12 plays, using up 619 on the clock. And they took three penalties on that drive, but persisted, coming back each time to move the ball downfield. And that was their most effective play, an inside handoff to Nelson. The last one for a touchdown. Over Rubius, high, short kickoff into the wind. Taken by Robert Farmer.
Farmer batters his way out to the 35-yard line of Notre Dame. Farmer, the senior from Bolingbrook, Illinois, reserve running back. So Notre Dame has good field position here with 3-12 to go first half. Covarrubias took a very short drop to kick that ball about two or three yards and didn't get any distance at all on it. Notre Dame gets to start in great field position at their own 35. Slot formation to the left for the Irish. Mosley in the slot. Malcolm Johnson wide left. Play action. Hollis running out of time, looking for an open man, and he'll just run it upfield and takes it out of bounds. Game of about one. Forced out by Rashad Smith. The strength of this Navy team is it's secondary. They do a good job in coverage downfield. They were in a zone that time. They normally play man-to-man. -man. Paulus just can't find anybody open. It just scrambles out of bounds. Holter was the man who finally forced him toward the sideline, the defensive end number 99. So it's second and nine. Irish, their own 31-yard line. Notre Dame off of bye week. The overtime loss to Air Force. Navy pumped at five and one for the season and looking for a second service academy upset of the Irish. Autry Denson. Denson gets about eight. It'll leave third down and a long yard for the first down. Well, coming up on the Ford halftime report, Craig James and Pat O'Brien will have all the scores and highlights. Danny Sheridan will be along with some inside information all coming up on the Ford Halftime Report. Stay with us here all day long on CBS Sports. Third down and closer to two. Denson, nowhere to go. A Notre Dame punt. Tom Poulter. Midshipman did a great job of plugging everything up. Denson had nowhere to go. When they lined up, Navy looked like they didn't have a chance to stop him for a two-yard gain. But what happened was the linebackers and the safeties came up and filled all the vacated gaps and were able to stop that play. So fourth down from the 40-yard line, there was a loss of about three yards on the play. Scott waiting for it at the Navy 10-yard line. Hunter Smith, the punter, standing at the Notre Dame 26. Off the side of his foot and goes out of bounds at the 23-yard line of the Naval Academy. And so with 1.30 left in the half, Notre Dame leading 14-7. Coming up next, our college football doubleheader continues with regional coverage. Many of you will see top-ranked Florida Gators in a grudge match with the Georgia Bulldogs. And some of you will see a Big East bash between the Syracuse Orangemen and the West Virginia Mountaineers. More football following Notre Dame and Navy here on CBS Sports. First down for the Naval Academy. Their own 23-yard line. McCoy, the quarterback, faked that inside handoff, the pitch, and McGrew is hit. First to hit him was Deke Cooper, spun off him, but was able only to get back to the line of scrimmage before he was stopped again. Usually with ten. two minutes to go in the half or at the end of the game, Nor Navy normally puts in their passing quarterback, number eight, Ben Fay, but they've elected to keep Chris McCoy in right there. Maybe they just uh, backed up like this, don't want to commit a turnover. They've got some momentum and maybe go into the dressing room only down a touchdown. McCoy wants to throw. He slipped, but slips out of there. Now deep downfield, he has a man open. Corey Shem. To the 15-yard line, Ivory Covington pulled him down there, but Shem got behind Covington. They're going to bring this one back, it looks like. A flag back at the line of scrimmage. In fact, in the backfield, a 59-yard pass play will be wiped out. That was what a tough break for Navy. Called by the linesman. It may be offsides or legal procedure, something, but it's against Navy. 
Great effort by Chris McCoy. Slipped as he made his first move. Found his footing and got out there to find the open man. Yeah, but Chris did too good of a job. He got beyond the line of scrimmage, so that'll come back and also be a loss of down for Navy. Once he started to move, apparently stepped over the line of scrimmage before he released the ball. Yeah, great. Great play by McCoy to avoid the rush. Doesn't know where he is, gets beyond the line of scrimmage, but comes up with one great throw downfield to Corey Shem. And Navy would have been down deep inside of Notre Dame territory if maybe not for just another inch or two there. It didn't look like he was over by very much. Instead, it's third down, back at the 25-yard line, third and 15, at the 20-yard uh, line, pardon me. Straight drop this time by McCoy, and overthrows the intended receiver, Butts, number 84. Notre Dame had coverage there, so Navy will have to punt this time. Heads under the one-minute mark, 51 seconds remain in the first half. He also had Howard Bryant running free down the middle of the field, but Faye didn't see him. He was locked on the outside receiver that time. Lights have been turned on here at Croke Park. It does get dark earlier in the afternoon over here at this time of year. And so these lights are on to make sure we have good illumination for the remainder of the game. And another short punt from Covarrubias. Notre Dame will have it in Navy territory. It goes out at the 42-yard line, and there are still 45 seconds left. A 22-yard punt. Field position's been hurting Navy all day long. That is not the time or the situation to get off a 22-yard punt. With only 50, 45 seconds to go in this game, Notre Dame has a chance to put up the score and end that Navy momentum. brings them out. Edwards and Denson, the running backs. Denson on the wing. Straight drop for Paulus. They want the screen. And the tight end, Griplevich, has a first down. They're in their two-minute drill. It gets to the 32-yard line in the hurry-up. Notre Dame has all their timeouts left, and they take one now. 27 seconds remain. In the first half, Notre Dame 14 to 7 and threatening. With a six-year unlimited mileage tread life warranty gives you better wet traction than any rain tire plus michelin confidence in most driving conditions because you don't just cover a lot of miles you cover a lot of weather mfs invented the mutual fund in 1924 by the time poor away thundered to the triple crown we'd been in the race for 17 years mfs we invented the mutual fund Notre Dame with second and one in Navy territory. 27 seconds left in the first half. At the midshipman 33-yard line. Hollis has some time trying to find a man, and it's incomplete. Intended for Johnson. Timed up. Johnson, number 80. Timed up nicely by 29. Andrews for Navy, they're all American, just came in, got his left hand on the ball, kept his right hand off the receiver, and that's what the referees will look for if that right hand is grabbing that offensive player. They'll call pass interference. Great play by 29. Sean Andrews, eight interceptions last year, earned him the nickname F-29 Interceptor. <laughs> it's third and one. 20 seconds left in the half. Denson, big hole. Denson, good score. Touchdown. A 
Tree Denson 33 yards for the score on a third and one play. Huge hole and great acceleration. Pretty hard for Lou Holtz to keep him off the field, no matter what his other uh, his other problems might be and other aspects of the game. I, I think he's out of that doghouse, <laughs> wouldn't you say? He is a dangerous running back, the sophomore from Lauder Hill, Florida, and a flag down on the point after play. Oh, he's only a sophomore, but he sure has some explosion. And you saw it the other day in our meeting with Lou Holtz. Hey, how about this guy? He's a big play guy. Lou said, well, you got to block, and you got to catch the ball and do all your assignments. And if you don't do it, you're not going to play. So maybe he sent. So that was a message he had sent to Denson. And he obviously uh, uh, listened to that because he's come back with a vengeance today. He's got 85 yards rushing, and first half isn't over yet. Jim Sanson for the point after. It's backed up on the five-yard penalty against Notre Dame. And Sanson connects from there, and it's 21-7. to That's the point after from Sanson. 33-yard touchdown run by Autry Denson. Navy knew what was coming. They only had one yard to go. They bunched everybody up at the line of scrimmage. Denson pierces an opening, shows his speed, and gets upfield for a touchdown. Boy, that's very frustrating when you know it's coming and you still can't stop it. Once he's past that initial push of Navy, it's all over. Nobody can lay a hand on Autry Denson. Well, Kinder got the start today, but Denson came in not long after that, and, and I think some of that stuff, too, doesn't go over so well with Lou Holtz. <laughs> the little kind of Deion Sanders look there going into the end zone. Well, I think the score will go over uh, quite nicely with Lou right now. Navy had some mom momentum scoring after uh, being down 14 points, but Notre Dame increases its lead again. 42 yards and three plays. There's Lou. You see that little patch on his nose. Apparently, uh, we were wondering what that was. There's no sun out here for him to worry about. <laughs> but apparently in the warm-up, one of his players accidentally ran into him, knocked his glasses down onto the bridge of his nose, scraped uh, the nose, and so they had to patch him up. But he can play hurt. Well, I wonder if that player is uh, in the game today or if he put <laughs> him on the bench or in that doghouse. <laughs> The Notre Dame will kick it off with 14 seconds left, and indeed the sun we just mentioned has come out for the first time today. And they hit the ground ball shot. It's gathered in at the 15-yard line by Will Smith. And Smith gets out to the 30 with eight seconds on the clock. Don't forget, coming up at halftime, we'll be going to our halftime report with Craig Patton Danny. Scores and highlights from around the rest of college football today. And we've got doubleheader action on CBS. So stay with us all afternoon. First down, Navy at their 30-yard line. Eight seconds left to play. We'll see whether they throw it deep or just get to the locker room. Running play to Nelson. The same effective one they had on their scoring drive. Just the other way, Omar Nelson. And that'll wind up the first half. So from Croke Park here in Dublin, Ireland, the score, Notre Dame 21, Navy 7. CBS Sports coverage of college football continues after this message and a word from your local station. So I hear he's moving to the corner office. How's he do it? I don't know. Yesterday he spent an hour with some life insurance guy. That's good time management? Well, Winters gave the agent his name. Winters? As in CEO? Mm -hmm. How's he doing? Mm -hmm. Have you heard from the quiet company? Northwestern Mutual Life. On Mondays, the Wilsons always wore blue. On Tuesdays, they always played Pinochle. And on Thursdays, they always ate Chef Boyardee. Then one Thursday, a can of new Superiore ravioli accidentally dropped into Mrs. Wilson's bag. Superiore had a richer, redder sauce, firmer pasta, and plumper ravioli. In fact, it's preferred nearly two to one. The Wilsons love the taste so much, they've been known to eat it on a Friday wearing checks. New Superiore from Franco-American. It's not what you're used to. It's better. CBS, welcome home. Wow. 
the Furniture Factory Warehouse Power Package is back! With more purchasing power for you! Complete seven-piece living rooms with sofa, love seat, coffee table, two in tables, and lamps from just $4.99. That's West Style. $5.99. Traditional Style. $6.99. Or an overstuffed loose pillow book. $7.99. But that's not all. Take home a complete coffee and end table set. Just 49 bucks. Spiderlink. Below 77 bucks. Plus immediate delivery. And easy credit. Expect more for less price. The Furniture Factory Warehouse. The Texas Supreme Court, once a national disgrace. Then Texans get a new Chief Justice, Tom Phillips, and the reforms begin. Tom Phillips has led the fight to limit judicial campaign contributions, make lawsuits less costly and courts more efficient, get politics out of the courts, build a court that strictly interprets the law. Now he's the choice of every bar poll, endorsed by every major paper, chosen to lead the nation's Chief Justices. Tom Phillips, leadership and integrity on the Texas Supreme Court. Just looking for a garage to service your car can make you nervous. But there's one that will make you feel right at home. Sears. The one with tires, batteries, brakes, and shocks. All backed by a guarantee that lets you decide when the work is done. That garage is attached to our house. The Sears Auto Center. There's a new Sears Auto Center opening their doors in your neighborhood. Our garage is your garage. Super Doppler Neighborhood Radar, only on Eyewitness News. The College Football Today Ford Division Halftime Report is sponsored by Ford Division. And welcome to College Football Today Ford Halftime Report. The halftime score, Notre Dame 21, Navy 7. And hi again, everybody. I'm Pat O'Brien, along with Craig James. The game is on tape. We are live here in New York, and Notre Dame has won 32 in a row against Navy, and we'll have uh, the second part of that. Let's uh, fire up the scoreboard, all the live games this afternoon around the country. Let's begin in the Big Ten, Minnesota and Ohio State. Ohio State has just scored a touchdown now. It's 6-0. John Cooper hoping to do better than that. After throwing an interception in the end zone earlier in the game, OSU turns it over. Yeah, Jermont Jackson trying to stretch over the goal line for the touchdown fumble. Rodney Heath recovers for the Golden Gophers. Stanley Jackson, three interceptions on the, uh, on the season. He already has two today. They're turning the ball over and making mistakes, which they haven't done this season. Pepe Pearson, our guy, has just gone in. It's 6-0 Buckeyes. Nebraska and Oklahoma, 17-0 uh, Cornhuskers in the first half. Yeah, Nebraska's defense is playing really well. Oklahoma's defense outstanding, but no offense for the Sooners. Nebraska's won the last five against Oklahoma, 17-0 at the half. In the SEC, Tennessee and South Carolina, uh, Peyton Manning's got his game together, I'll tell you. Here he finds Andy McCullough downfield for a 48-yard score. Yeah, play-action pass, doing a great job for them down there, and, and excellent. When you give Manning an opportunity to go one-on-one -on -one with a corner or a free safety, forget it. And he added another. He's got two touchdowns on the day. They lead in the second quarter, 21-7. In the ACC, are there any two teams that hate each other more than this? North Carolina and NC State's 33-14 in the second quarter. There's Mac Brown down there at Tobacco Road. First play from scrimmage. NC State quarterback Jimmy Barnett stripped by Bonnie Holiday. Covered in the end zone by Kay Mays for the Tar Heel touchdown. Extra point missed. NC State deep on their own territory, forced to punt. And what do they do? They punt it to Leon Johnson, North Carolina. The back's going to go 39 yards. This is a running back, just like Tiki Barber. Now that we're seeing a reduction of scholarships in college football, a lot more great running backs are returning punts and having success with it. Three touchdowns for Leon today, and we are seeing that. And uh, North Carolina State and North Carolina is 33 to 14. Chris Keldoff, quarterback from North Carolina, top passing efficiency guy in the ACC. He has a big time arm. We had a lot to say about that game. Michigan, Michigan State at the big house. The Wolverines have it together so far, 28-10. It's snowing there. In the ACC, Virginia and Duke, it's parents' day today. And there's no score in the first quarter for those parents. Miami and Temple. This game is a whole lot closer than we thought it might be, or that some people thought it might be. And there's Ron Dickerson, sometimes coach, sometimes not. I guess he's going to stay. Henry Burris drops back, then decides to keep it himself. And we've seen a lot of quarterbacks try to scramble against Miami and not be successful. Burris gets around the corner and goes in for the touchdown. But Ryan Clement, this guy has played extremely gutsy. He's got a bad shoulder. He took a great beating earlier before this. The touchdown pass to Chris Jones on a seven-yarder. Where's Miami's defense, though? Temple, this is a Temple Owls. 24-20 in a close game in the second quarter. The Big Ten, Iowa and Illinois. 
Cedric Shaw's touchdown for the Hawkeyes. They trail Illinois 14 to seven. Southwestern Louisiana and Virginia Tech, the Hokies lead by only one. 10 to 9 in the Big Ten, Purdue and Wisconsin. Wisconsin's had a lot of trouble lately, but they lead 24 to nothing. Yeah, they got a big guy there, and they're fired up too. I mean, you know, you talk about a ball club that's struggling. Purdue just can't get it going. Ron Dane, though, he's putting a hurting on the Boilermakers. 24 zip there for the Badgers. Also, Lafayette and Army, the Cadets up 7 to nothing. Dartmouth and Harvard. Harvard leads 3 to nothing in the second quarter, and Columbia with a win today. Uh, they would be 7 to 0. It's best start since 1932. No score in the second quarter and one more update now Iowa and Illinois are tied at 14 at the half coming up we'll take a look at a safety who has made a strong statement off the field when college football today rolls on right after this Bullwinkle we passed by here an hour ago we're here I thought we were there Bullwinkle oh, don't okay that's enough TV for today Let's go for a ride. Yeah, come on, we're out of here. Dad, where are we going? This better be good. We gotta go to the bathroom. Oh, honey. See that? See, 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 see? That's cool. Where we gotta be there. Hey, stop, wait! Dad, can we take him home? Ford Explorer. Because the world's too big to be left unexplored. We're there. At Michelin, we believe a tire that's just good in the rain isn't good enough. The Michelin X1, with a six-year unlimited mileage tread life warranty, gives you better wet traction than any rain tire, plus Michelin confidence in most driving conditions. It has to, because the way we see it, you don't just cover a lot of miles, you cover a lot of weather. The Michelin X1. How far can MasterCard take you? Here in Australia, MasterCard takes you into the future. The new MasterCard Cash Card. A MasterCard you can use just like cash. It's happening right now down under, and it's on its way here. I helped my dad build this place. Well, help. <laughs> I was so small I could barely swing the hammer. But he taught me a lot about tools. He used to say, you can buy cheap tools every couple of years. Or you can buy Stanley once. Since 1843, a company from New Britain, Connecticut has been helping people do things right. Stanley. I even take my tape roll fishing. Well, that way I'll know how big a story to tell. A powerful drug cartel holds America hostage with the ultimate killing machine. Only Chuck Norris can stop them. Let's do it! Man to man! On Walker CBS Tonight. One update you on that Miami Temple game. Miami leading 24-20. Now leads 31-20 over Temple as Trent Jones scores on a two-yard touchdown run. That's Trent's second touchdown of the day. And 31-20 in the second quarter is our score. Welcome back to College Football Today Ford Halftime Report. Coming up next, the top-ranked Florida Gators meet the Georgia Bulldogs. One of the stars you'll see in that game is Florida senior Lawrence Wright, a man who has overcome childhood hardships to set an example for today's youth. For more on that, here's Michelle Tafoya. These are the indifferent and sometimes violent streets of Liberty City, Miami, where the fight for survival begins at birth. Those who escape rarely return, and few make it out without help. Lawrence Wright escaped, but a mission brings him back. He has created The Right Track, a program designed to give kids hope and options. One, two, three. Right track! I believe that I can be instrumental to young people. And I like encouraging people that, you know, motivate them to say, oh, when the deck is stacked against you, it don't matter. You just keep fighting, keep plugging away. And uh, that's something that I always try to convey to all my kids. Lawrence was a troubled teenager himself. In junior high, he was blamed for starting a riot, an event that crushed the person who cared for him most, his mother. What was the turning point? What, what changed? My mother, she just kept crying and crying and crying. And I didn't want to see her shed those tears anymore because I know those tears and all that pain that I've caused and that agony. I always try to be strong for Lawrence and try to be the tough mom and you're going to listen, you're going to mind. But that particular day, I was so crushed and I began to just cry. And I, I will never forget the day how Lawrence just promised me 
He said, Mom, don't cry. I'm going to be, I'm going to, I'm going to do what's right. I'm going to turn around. Now an all-SEC defensive back, an academic honor roll member, life is better for Wright. But the world remains harsh. Wright recently lost two childhood friends who helped him start the right track. Arthur King was a cornerback at Austin P when he died of heart failure in 1994. Marlon Barnes was a linebacker at Miami when he was murdered last summer. You know, it's hard to, to say how much I miss him. You know, I had so many friends that passed away, uh, but nothing like this, you know, nothing that quite affects me in the same way. This is another one of those things that's making me a lot stronger to help me uh, help someone else that's probably going through the same thing. Wright is now taking his vision to the next level. As a building construction major, he has designed a facility to house the Wright track. Wright wants to change the world the way he changed himself, with hard work and an unshakable loyalty to those he'll never leave behind. I want to be able to affect a person, you know, by me talking to you. You're not going to directly affect your life. And I want to come in, I say what I have to say, and I just want to be able to say, hey, you can do anything you want to do. If anybody ever tell you that you can't do them, tell them Lawrence Wright told me I can do it. And if he told me I can do it, I know I can do it. That's what I believe. Lawrence Wright wears number 156 in practice to honor Arthur King, who wore number one at Austin P, and Marlon Barnes, who wore number 56 at Miami. He not only plays with his body, Craig James, but with his mouth, right? Uh, the guy's unbelievable. He goes on the field and he talks as much as anybody in college football, but he does back it up. Very important that he stays on the right track himself because there are going to be a lot of folks out there in this world, young people that are watching him to stay on the right track. Got to be able to back it up. When we return, we'll get some college football inside information from Danny Sheridan as our halftime activities continue. So where's our leader? She'll be here. She's meeting with someone about her personal finances. Wait a minute. The chief financial officer needs financial help. From whom? I think it's her life insurance agent. Really? So what's the agent's name? Have you heard about Northwestern Mutual Life's college internship? A lot of college students are overeducated and underemployed. They face downsizing, re-engineering, temp jobs, working for their folks, living at home. As a student, I was looking for an opportunity to learn how to run my own business, work in a dynamic and interesting field, get great training and office support, and get compensated for my hard work while still in school. I didn't want to sit behind a desk all day. I wanted a chance to compete with myself, have a career with a lot of freedom. I became a sales intern with Northwestern Mutual Life, one of the largest companies in the U.S. For the last 30 years, more than 11,000 students at more than 500 campuses have gained invaluable experience through Northwestern's program. It's not a gopher ship, it's a true internship, a chance to test drive a career for women and men who are still in college or graduate school. Like that accountant I told you about? He's great. Uptown, huh? Did me a huge favor. What was that? Gave my name to his life insurance agent. Didn't do that for me. Have you heard from the quiet company? Northwestern Mutual Life. You know, it's always nice to have Danny Sheridan around the house. He has the latest college sports info from around the country. Danny, nice to see you. Always a pleasure, Pat. We begin with uh, coaching changes. You had some Bill Curry and others earlier here on CBS. He scooped everybody on that. But now you say the floodgates might open. It's unbelievable, Pat. I think what will happen with the most recent firings, you'll see a chain reaction by all the athletic directors. Instead of waiting till December like they normally would to fire their coach, you're looking at possibly a bloody November where as many as eight coaches could be fired. Get their new coaches in place, start recruiting. Wow, Merry Christmas to them, huh? Speaking of Christmas, we get a Christmas present possibly from Troy Davis at Iowa State. 
Well, I spoke to his coach last night, Dan McCarney, and what Dan McCarney said was after the season, he's going to sit Troy down, get him together with his parents, get, a, get all the NFL personnel, make the right decision. But the thing they like about this kid, he wants to get a college education. He's very happy. He's rooming with his brother, Darren, a freshman. And the feeling is that he's going to come back. This kid should have won the Heisman Trophy last year, and he ought to get, he's just going to get invited to the dinner this year. Life is unfair. Too political. All right, a few trivia freaks, by the way. Paul Horning of Notre Dame in 1956 is the only player to win the Heisman while on a team with a losing record. And Iowa State is 2-5. and five. Now, as far as the Bulls are concerned, we hear, or you hear, the controversy is swirling around the Bull Alliance. All right, well, the Western Athletic Conference, Pat, they're considering filing an antitrust lawsuit against the Bull Alliance. They want their conference champion included. They asked Conference USA to join them in this lawsuit. Conference USA declined. Uh, it could get really sticky if they file this lawsuit. Antitrust legislation could cause a lot of ill will, but that's what they're thinking about. And then we spoke to a spokesman at Conference USA, and he confirms that report, so you get high marks on that one oh. as usual. <laughs> Let's go to basketball, though. Down in Arkansas, there might be some problems. Right, well, uh, the University of Arkansas, their basketball program, they're going to receive the dreaded letter of official in inquiry from the NCAA. What that means, Pat, that's a list of allegations against the school. The most serious allegation would be the lack of institutional control. Now, that means lack of institutional control means the NCAA is very concerned that the university is not properly monitoring their program. If for some reason that charge is upheld, President Clinton, if he gets reelected, he won't be able to help him. But those are allegations, and they will get them formally in writing. Meantime, Frank Broyles, the Arkansas AD, said just moments ago, baseless rumor, I'm unaware of any facts to support that statement. Well, I he think he in. probably will be aware of it shortly. All right, Danny, always nice to have you here. Okay. We'll send you back to Tim Ryan and company in Dublin for the second half of Notre Dame Navy right after this. The College Football Today Ford Division Halftime Report has been sponsored by Ford Division. This is Ford Escort. It's new and it's nifty. It's made for the smart, the intelligent thrifty. It's new out and in, has airbags for two. Even anti-lock brakes are available. Ooh, the trunk, it is huge to hold tremendous treasure. And if your treasure is of stupendous measure, the rear seat folds down to let bigger things in, still leaving room for your next of kin's kin. It has all the what's its and gidgets to put it concisely, and Escort's right price should suit you quite nicely. Jesse, Jesse, you're next. I'm all yours. Save it for the stage, Romeo. Carol always gives it to me straight. Like when she told me about my... I told him about head and shoulders. Regular shampoos just rinse flakes away so they could come back. Head and shoulders helps prevent flakes from even forming. You see the difference? You look great. Thanks, but will it get me this part? Couldn't hurt. Head and shoulders, because great hair can't have flakes. Hey, break a leg. You've been thinking about getting a digital satellite dish. And thinking. And thinking some more. Well, think about this. The people at Radio Shack can answer your questions. Plus, now they've got great deals. Like a Prime Star satellite system for only about a dollar a day plus installation. 95 channels of Prime Sports and Movies with terrific picture and sound quality. Think about it. Better yet, stop thinking about it. Radio Shack, you've got questions, we've got answers. A lot of people my age set off on cruises around the world. Now I set off on a second career. Hi, guys. Of course, my Dean Witter Broker's impeccable investment advice prepared me for any sort of retirement I chose. And I chose to start over with a business of my own. Wait a minute. Are you sure you're old enough to be here? <laughs> That's my idea of a fascinating adventure. At Dean Witter, we measure success one investor at a time. It's the number one new drama of the season. Can knowing the future save a young athlete's life? Just change it back. I can't. It doesn't work that way. Early edition tonight. Tim Ryan with Phil McConkey. We're at halftime. The Irish uh, lead 21 to 7 over the Navy team that was once captained by Phil McConkey back in 1978. And even I uh, had to feel badly about them not getting uh, that uh, touchdown after the long pass. But, you know, we mentioned the crowd here earlier. 
Phil, uh, there is a huge crowd on hand here, most of them on the side of our cameras, so don't be deceived by the empty seats. A lot of those lower seats on the far side of the field were not sold because the view would not have been a good one here at the stadium uh, be because this is a much wider field made for uh, Irish football, Gaelic football, and uh, hurling. So a uh, very enthusiastic crowd, and they enjoyed the bands at halftime as well. I, I referred to that long pass play by McCoy, callback as he stepped over the line of scrimmage. Had they gone in, could have been 14 all to half. Right, they're down 14 to 7 at that point. A big play. He avoided the rush, got the ball to Corey Shem deep inside of Notre Dame territory. Could have scored even up the game, but he was over the line of scrimmage by just a little bit, enabling a bad punt. They get good field position, Notre Dame, go in the end zone to go up 21-7. Well, now, statistically, of course, uh, they have just not been able to rush the ball, even though they're third best in the nation. They've been stuffed. Yeah, they have. They only had negative two yards in the first quarter, came back with 63 yards in the second, most of that on their long touchdown drive. But Notre Dame has outrushed them in the first half with 104 yards. Chris McCoy, one of the leading rushers in the country, only putting up negative two yards today, negative six yards, and he averages 122. Notre Dame doing a great job on the Navy quarterback, and that's the key to this offense, stopping the quarterback. And those penalties have been costly, too, to Navy as well. We heard Lou Holtz talk to Andrea Joyce about the Notre Dame hurting themselves. It's really been Navy. Six penalties for 39 yards, and uh, they were damaging, even though in, in uh, the drive that they scored, they managed to overcome a couple of penalties on that drive and still went in for the score by Omar Nelson. But they are down by 14 as we open the second half here at Croke Park in Dublin under the lights. The sun was out for a while, and it has been dry, but the field remains greasy and slippery. And the kickoff taken in the end zone by Hunter does not bring it up. They'll start from the 20. Uh, just moments ago, Andrea Joyce talked to Notre Dame's Lou Holtz. Comes on your offense the last couple of weeks. What about their execution today? Well, Navy's done a little thing that we didn't expect. I think we got to adjust it. Having a young offensive guard in there presented some problems, but you know, we, we stopped ourselves with a penalty and we haven't been successful on third and two. Defensively, what's been the key to stopping McCoy? Well, I think we played well up front. I, I think we got to make some plays on the secondary. And this is six straight quarters now. So the wishbone team had made an, uh, a turnover, and that's uh, incredible. We just can't force a turnover. Your nose okay? I'm fine. Okay, oh, thanks, Coach. <laughs> well, we told you earlier, Lou Holtz can play hurt. It looks like he just got his Halloween mask on a few uh, few days late. That was McCoy on uh, first down. Picked up about uh, six and leave second and four for Navy. McCoy, four of six passing in the first half for 55 yards. And of course, that kind of heartbreaker for him. He had the long one downfield. Could have set them up to tie things at 14 all, but call back when he stepped over the line of scrimmage. Second and four, Navy. The 25 yard line to open the second half. There's that turnaround inside handoff with effective. In the first half, at least in the second quarter, after uh, they had just not been able to move the ball at all, and Nelson stopped short of the first down and leaves third down about a yard. Alton Maiden, the nose tackle, number 42 on the tack. On almost every play, it looks like Navy is uh, uh, committing an illegal procedure. They've got the slot back that starts in motion just before the snap of the ball. It almost looks a little bit like Canadian football, but it's a legal play, and they're able to utilize that movement to their advantage. Third and less than a yard. And Nelson picks up the first down to the 32-yard line of the Naval Academy. And that triple option, obviously the first choice for the quarterback is the fullback. He'll put the ball in the fullback's belly. He'll make a read off of the defense, and depending on what they'll do, the fullback sometimes sees the same thing, and he'll know whether or not he's going to get the ball. If he doesn't get the ball, he's got to make the block to spring the quarterback. He'll either duck it up under his fullback or look for his pitch man, and this guy can run it as well as anybody. First down, Navy. Two wideouts to the left, and now McCoy changing up the play. Gives to the fullback, and he goes nowhere. Nelson, they were waiting for him. Maiden, the nose tackle again, the senior from Dallas. 6'4", 270 pounder. 
Navy, the third-ranked team in the country, rushing the football, as we talked about earlier, had a tough time in the first quarter, but came around with 63 yards in the second, and right now they're on a drive with second and 10. McCoy pitching this time to McGrew. McGrew turned back at the corner, nowhere to go. Notre Dame covered that corner very well. Tatum coming up to force it inside, and Dansby made the tackle. Well, this is how they started the first half, Navy. In the first quarter, they had third and long on their first couple possessions. Right now, Notre Dame is committing eight guys up on the line of scrimmage between the two tight ends to stop that Navy running attack. And what they're doing is putting a guy on the fullback, one on the quarterback, and one on the pitch guy. And they're carrying out their assignments to perfection again. Pickup of two, it leaves third and eight. Boy, and a drop back and the rush on the line of the ball loose. Picked up by the Irish. It's going to be win. Touchdown. Well, Lou Holtz talked about six quarters of play without a turnover by a wishbone team. And that time, Chris McCoy got blindsided from the backside, and there's his turnover that Lou Holtz has been looking for for the last two games against Air Force in the first half against Navy. And he gets a big turnover right there that puts the Irish up potentially by 21 points, depending upon this kick. Sanson for the point after. It is good. And Ronaldo win, picking up the loose ball. Finally, the turnover by the Naval Academy. Let's see it again here as Wynn takes it in. Corey Miner, number four. He's got a beat on the quarterback. I think that's his assignment all day long. They told him, just go after him. McCoy couldn't see him, didn't know he was coming. The ball lays on the ground. There's loose turnover. Win touchdown. So where's our leader? She'll be here. She's meeting with someone about her personal finances. Wait a minute. The chief financial officer needs financial help. From whom? I think it's her life insurance agent. Really? So, what's the agent's name? Have you heard about Northwestern Mutual Life's college internship? When it's time for routine service, the name you know best is all you need to know. It's the name that stands for GM trained technicians, the right tools and equipment, and genuine GM parts. It's the name for people who know your GM vehicle better than the rest. GM Good Wrench Service, the best name in the business. How's your job? Great. There's still a lot of stress, though. You still getting those headaches? Yeah. Yeah, I actually went to the doctor. Mm -hmm. I thought they might be migraines. He said they weren't. He told me to take Tylenol, extra strength. Tylenol? Not some prescription, huh? The Tylenol works great, Dad. More than aspirin, more than ibuprofen. For headaches, doctors recommend Tylenol the most. You should have come to work for me, Julie. <laughs> oh, sure. No stress there. CBS Sports coverage of college football is sponsored by Northwestern Mutual Life. Have you heard from The Quiet Company? Your GM Goodwrench service dealer. We want your business. And by the NASDAQ Stock Market. Tim Ryan, Phil McConkie in Dublin, Ireland, where Notre Dame now leads Navy 28-7 here at Croke Park. A touchdown picked up by uh, Ronaldo Wynn on the fumble and uh, big plays under coach Lou Holtz. They do come at propitious times to say the least. And there, a uh, third fumble recovery for a touchdown by Notre Dame. And at this time, it's Ronaldo Wynn, the senior defensive end from Chicago, Illinois. Fifth year senior. And alertly picking up the ball after a big hit by Corey Miner on quarterback Chris McCoy of Navy. Pickoff taken in the end zone by Hunter. 
And Hunter gets spun around and works his way over the 20 to about the 23-yard line. The last to get him was Deke Cooper. Well, this game today with a slippery field turned into a field position game. Notre Dame thus far has had a big advantage in the kicking game. Their punters getting the ball off, their kickers putting the ball deep in the end zone. Unlike Navy, a 22-yard punt after that misplay by Chris McCoy gave Notre Dame good field position, and the kicking game is hurting Navy right now. Chris McCoy. Canada, Tim Canada, and your fullback. Holds his way for three, maybe four on the play. Actually, they spotted up for about a five-yard gain. Well, after Bo Morgan destroyed the Notre Dame defense a couple of weeks ago, I think Bob Davies said, hey, if we're going to get beat, it's going to be by the fullback or the pitch man. We are not going to let Chris McCoy, the quarterback, get upfield with the football. And they're taking away McCoy so far. McCoy with 731 yards rushing coming into this game today. And this is Canada with a big heart. at the Notre Dame 42-yard line. 30-yard pickup. Canada alternates with Omar Nelson. They have over 700 yards combined rushing. Alton Madden missing the tackle. Canada getting upfield. A big game for Navy, their biggest of the afternoon. And again, they're concentrating on the quarterback. That's going to leave the pitch man and the fullback with some room to run. Canada with 245 yards rushing coming into the game. Big one there, the midshipman in Notre Dame territory. That is Nelson this time. And he gets about seven down to the Irish 35-yard line. What Charlie Weatherby likes to do is alternate all across the board on his Navy team. Defensive line, running backs. He's undersized, usually against most teams he plays against, so he wants to keep his guys fresh, get everybody involved, and everybody has a chance to contribute. Second along two for Navy inside the 35-yard line of the Fighting Irish. McCoy's going to get hit by Miner, slips away, but is buried by a sea of Notre Dame white jerseys. Corey Miner again, that good speed that he brings from the outside linebacking spot. For some reason, Navy wants to run that option to the right side, and Corey Miner is just coming down the line of scrimmage. McCoy doesn't see him. I don't know why the Navy coaches don't change up and maybe come at Corey Miner if they can so they know where he is because he's wreaking havoc right now in that Navy backfield. Loss of a yard in the play. It'll be third down and a long four. This is Canada. Canada should have the first down. Alton Maiden, the nose tackle on the tackle. Let's see where they make the uh, spot. And it is first down, Navy, to the 31-yard line. Navy comes back in. Go ahead. Yeah, they're on the move again. They had the one drive in the second quarter where despite three penalties, they were able to punch it in for a touchdown. And right now, they've been moving out from their 21-yard line. Notre Dame's trying to do right now is make sure the quarterback doesn't beat them. They're getting good penetration, looking at the quarterback. They had three guys chasing the quarterback, but Canada, again, right up the middle, finds a seam, and that Navy offensive line did a great job of screening out Notre Dame. You know, we talked to uh, Charlie Weatherby about if they were down a couple of touchdowns, would they start to throw the ball? Would we see more of the better passer, Ben Fay? And he said, not necessarily. We like to stay with what we can do best. And so far, they're sticking to that plan and moving the ball. Canada, again this time, met just over the line and buried. Got about a one yard, maybe two, on the play, depending on the spot. Corey Miner on the hit. You know, we talked to Ben Fay. We asked him the same question. Hey, you're third and 15, or you're down by a couple of touchdowns. You come in and light it up, throwing the ball. He said, no, we've got confidence in what we do. We all know our assignments, and we're going to keep running the ball, but this is the first time all year long that Navy's been in a game like this where they're down 21 points to a big team, and there's Ben Fay. 
Second down, about nine. McCoy being forced wide, and the pitch man, McGrew, had two defenders waiting for him, a loss of about five. Corey Miner, he's been working both sides of the field, covered a lot of real estate, number four. Yeah, he's their all-star today, coming again from that one side, and McGrew says, hey, why are you giving me the ball in this situation? These guys are all around me. Just keep it falling down on the ground, Chris. Miner started 11 games as a freshman last year. A sophomore from Laverne, California, 6'2", 235-pounder. You can see he's got great linebacker speed. Burt Berry became a rushing linebacker, but in this uh, defensive setup, it's been Miner, who, as uh, Phil has pointed out, has been zeroing in on McCoy all day. This is Canada again. Gets to the 10-yard line. Picked up about nine. It'll leave fourth down at the 10 yard line. He was tripped up by Alton Maiden. You see the RR, the red RR on the back of Navy helmets. That's for Red Romo, their longtime trainer. 41 years at Navy, and this is his last one. Leon Red Romo, an institution at the Naval Academy. Quite a character. Miner does finally get a rest here. Bill Wagasey comes in for the Irish. They will go on fourth down, the Naval Academy. to throw for heaven out of bounds a flag is down maybe interference he was out of the end zone but they may get an interference call against the fighting irish yeah they're going to call that on 14 ivory covington for pushing on astor heaven astor heaven is six foot three inches and you got a cornerback that's about 5'8". He's got a big height advantage right there. Pushes him out of the end zone, not looking back for the ball. Another mismatch that Navy takes advantage of. Pass interference on the defense. The ball will be on the two-yard line. Automatic first down. So it's first and goal from the two. Navy threatening to close the margin up. Irish in front, 28 to 7. 6.33 to go in the third. Up. Notre Dame ganging up on that play. They didn't pay any attention at all to the quarterback. They felt the ball was going to the fullback. And he did get it and gain about a yard. They're about a half a foot short of a touchdown. David Quist in to add some bulk along the goal line defense, number 69 for the Irish. Right in the middle. Second and goal from the one. Again, it's Nelson, and he's in for a touchdown. the senior from Silver Springs, Maryland. Two touchdowns a week ago against Wake Forest, and he's got them both here today. Tom Vanderhorst for the point after. out there celebrating the score with the push-ups. 228-yard pound to Omar Nelson, only had to go a yard, and he took the Notre Dame defense right with him. So with 5.55 to go in the third, Notre Dame 28, Navy 14. Their goals are as basic as a first home, an education, a secure retirement. Yet they own over half of all the stock in America. They are individual investors, and for them, nothing is more valuable than information. Today, NASDAQ is delivering news about companies, performance tracking, even tiny stock quotes, instantly. So if you're an investor who seeks vital information, you now know where to find it.
Duracell battery. And now, the next leap forward. Introducing Duracell Power Check. The battery with a fuel gauge so you can check its power. Anytime, anywhere. New Duracell Power Check. No battery is more advanced. Huh? Is your danger sending the wrong signals? You're out. Get Selsun Power. Doctors recommend Selsun Blue number one, so don't send the wrong signals. Get Selsun Power. How does it feel to be Steve Young? It hurts. Give me my Advil. Nothing has shown me it works better on aching muscles or lasts longer. Advil is the one. Nasty game. Advanced medicine for pain. Phew. Just one bite from this guy could be deadly, so what if you want to pick it up? It's enough to rattle anyone's nerves, especially mine. Secrets of Snake Handling, Monday at 6. Team, the Fighting Irish lead Navy, but Omar Nelson has closed the gap for the midshipman. 77 yards, 11 plays, all of them rushes. And they used up 5.53 on the clock, but they've reduced the margin to 14 now here early in the third. Charlie Weatherby is an instilled a never-say-die attitude with this midshipman team. Down 21 points to Notre Dame. They muster up enough to come back to close the gap. Kickoff is short. Taken by Robert Farmer for Notre Dame. And Farmer battles his way to about the 29-yard line where Charles Fisher made the stop. Again, I don't know if that's a game plan of Navy is to kick the ball high, but he's only kicking it down to about the 22-yard line, and Notre Dame, again, starts with very good field position. Navy is into the wind from that side of the field, and it has been gusting around here at Broke Park. First down, Fighting Irish. Edwards. Straight ahead for about four. Mark Edwards, the senior fullback from Norwood, Ohio. Travis Cooley and Jervy Alota combined to stop him. Edwards came into the game with 266 yards rushing, 13 passes. They will throw to him those little circles into the middle. Second in a long five, Notre Dame. He finally lets it fly, and it is incomplete. Intended for Rakai Nelson, and almost picked off by Kevin Lewis. But the officials on the spot said the ball hit the ground. Good effort by Lewis. Paulus had Pete Kerplevich, or he's looking for him going deep. They had double coverage on Kerplevich. He throws the ball. I was amazed to even throw the ball into that coverage, but he had a guy coming open, Nelson. And let's take a look and see whether or not this ball hits the ground. The Navy bench was arguing vehemently, and it did hit the ground. Good call by the official that time. Third down, Irish. Shuffle pass, Edwards. Edwards has the first down. Over the 40-yard line to the 41. Second time they've run that shuttle pass this afternoon. Navy in an obvious passing situation, getting good penetration. This is a play when the blitz is on, they're coming at you from all sides. Let them come upfield and just pitch the ball underneath. Edwards makes a great play. Second effort for the first down. Rashad Smith and Jervy Alona on the stop, but the Irish with a first down at their 41. Edwards. That's three or four. 45-yard line. Notre Dame with a two-touchdown lead here in the third quarter. Tim Ryan, Phil McConkie at Dublin, Croke Park Stadium. Estimated crowd of 45,000 on hand for this game. 20,000 of them coming from the U.S. Some other expatriates coming over from the continent to be here to cheer on Navy and Notre Dame. Second down. Paulus 
space on the option and nowhere to go. Jason Snyder, the tackle, jumped in there. He sees that play in practice every day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can't run the option on this team. They see too much of it. They had 10 guys up on the line of scrimmage. Snyder just penetrates, and hey, Paulus, you're not fooling me. I got Chris McCoy. I go up against every single day, and he's a lot quicker than you are running this option. No gain. In fact, a loss of a bit. Makes it third down and nine. Spencer and Denson, the running backs. Great drop this time by Paulus. Forced out of the pocket. And it is incomplete, intended for Mosley. Distracted just enough by Sean Andrews. And Notre Dame will have to punt, so Navy rises up defensively to get the ball back. That's one thing you do. You score a touchdown, you get back into the game, you kick the ball off, you have to stop the opposing team if you want to get back into the game. Navy did just that. 29, Sean Andrews, All-American defensive back. They're tough to throw against. They have great coverage week in and week out, and they're showing it today against Notre Dame. Notre Dame uh, showed great respect in talking to them, uh, the quarterbacks particularly, Green and Sean Andrews. Comes the block. They tried for it, and it was close, but he nailed it. Hunter Smith, and it's into the end zone for a touchback. Lee Cooper trying to get there to keep it out. 59-yard punt by you Hunter know, Smith. Charlie Weatherby will do everything he can to get his team back in the game. Hunter Smith almost comes in to make that block. And Navy still down, but has the ball 28 to 14. Charles Fisher making the rush. Six thousand mutual funds. Choosing the right one for you can be overwhelming. Charles Schwab helps simplify the process. We provide over 900 funds, many without loads or commissions, and many that financial advisors prefer most. Then, to make it even easier, we use risk and return data from Morningstar to determine the historically high performers and put them all together in the select list. Only from Schwab. Call 1-800-5-NO-LOAD to get your free six-month subscription. Heisman Watch, sponsored by Charles Schwab, investing the way it should be. Well, I think a lot of people know who the Heisman might be, but uh, we have two candidates today that look pretty good for an undefeated team. Wyoming, everybody's talking about the whack and the talent they have out there. Marcus Harris, number two in the country in receptions per game, and fourth best pass efficiency quarterback is Josh Walworth. These guys have won 11 games in a row, the longest in Division 1A. Excellent precision in the passing game, but they're going against SMU today. The Ponies, they've got Ramon Flanagan, and you know Flanagan can throw the football, so SMU's pass defense, they'll be ready. I wouldn't be surprised if they win either. So Wyoming ends the day 9-0. Back to the game. <laughs> Hunter Smith nearly had a block by Fisher, but got off a whale of a punt. 59-yarder into the end zone, and Navy starts from their 20. 2.57 remaining in the third quarter. Navy playing into the wind. Smith's punt, wind it. Straight drop back into the pocket, into traffic, and Heaven could not bring it in. He was too well covered. Cooper and Rossum doubling on the coverage. Rossum, number 15, Dean Cooper, the freshman, number one. Rossum was a funny guy the other day. He said he didn't know what day it was coming over after that long flight from Indiana. He said, I just want to sleep. I can sleep anywhere. This guy, last year against USC, had Keyshawn Johnson. He's about 5'7". Keyshawn's about 6'4", but he shut him out and had a great game. So he says, hey, size doesn't mean anything. we got a second and 10 Navy on their own 20-yard line. That is McGrew. 
Forced out of bounds on the far side. He tried to bring it back into play. And they are going to spot it at the 27-yard line, so it's a gain of about seven yards. It'll be third and three, Navy. 27-yard line. And Navy, in this quarter, with 80 total yards and reducing that scoring margin to 14 points with their touchdown by Nelson. Trying to get this drive going out of their own zone. Coy. And the ball came loose and recovered by Notre Dame. It was stripped from McCoy. Second costly turnover. And the Irish have it in Navy territory at the 24-yard line. Turnovers or penalties that hurt this offense. It was penalties in the first half, and right there, a bad decision by Chris McCoy, and he doesn't make too many bad decisions running that triple option, and they're on the phone to him right now saying, hey, that's the second time you try to get the ball out to McGrew. First time he got away with it. This time, just eat the ball, and let's punt it away. And it was Ronaldo Wynn who stripped the ball for Cobbins to recover. It was Wynn who picked up the loose ball when... Corey Miner forced the fumble on McCoy that led to the fourth touchdown by Notre Dame that occurred earlier in the third quarter. Charlie Weatherby going in the locker room at halftime said penalties beat us. We're beating ourselves with penalties, and I'm sure right now he's thinking we're beating ourselves with costly turnovers. We just can't do it. Not with this type of offense that we run. We've got to protect the ball. Lou was talking about protecting the ball all week for Notre Dame. We didn't hear anything from Charlie Weatherby. Please reset the clock. The right now. Two minutes, 33 seconds. Two, three, three. They're asking to have the clock reset to 2 minutes 33 seconds. It shows 2.18. McCoy averaging 122 yards rushing at that option quarterback spot for Navy coming into this game today. 13 carries today. Please reset the clock. 2 minutes 33 seconds. 13 carries today for minus 16. Notre Dame has just zeroed in on the dangerous quarterback Chris McCoy and shut him out and has forced two turnovers from him. First down, Notre Dame, 24-yard line of Navy. Denson breaks loose. Denson will score. Touchdown. to 14 lead with this point after if it's successful by Sanson. And it is. Simple play, a dive off the right side of the line. You got to give credit to that freshman, number 77, Brad Williams. He's making the blocks. He comes out. He gets just enough of, of the defender for Navy, Rashad Smith. Denson runs into the end zone. Notre Dame comes back up 35 to 14. Inside your car's fuel system, there's a constant battle between good and evil. So if you have a dirty fuel system, none of these dark forces can match the power of STP Complete Fuel System Cleaner. STP's most technologically advanced fuel system cleaner ever. Dirt has met its match. STP Complete Fuel System Cleaner. I thought that being away at college meant you could really cut loose. <laughs> Last night I did. I don't remember much. But I know that if I'd been sober, I never would have gotten in the car with that guy. I hardly know him. The good news is we didn't crash or anything. The bad news 
Because now I've got to find out what else I did last night. North Carolina has taken control down in Tobacco Road versus NC State. Here, Chris Keldorf rolls out his Octavus Barnes on a 26-yard touchdown strike, giving the Tar Heels a 19-point lead. The story, Keldorf now has 19 touchdown passes this season. That's a new school record. Also, a couple other stars, Ohio State now taking control. They lead Minnesota 17 to nothing. And Columbia's undefeated season in jeopardy at the half. They trail Princeton, a 1-5 team, 14-3, back to Dublin. Notre Dame will kick it off up 35 to 14 with 2.25 to go in the third quarter here in Dublin, Ireland at Brook Park where the crowd has been very much involved in this action right from the get-go. 45,000 plus and it's fumble in the end zone and Navy will now not bring it out a wise decision after Enrico Hunter and Will Smith collided with each other trying to make the uh, catch. Somebody's got to make the call back there. Usually you have one guy assigned, it's me, 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 or you, 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 you. Somebody's got to make the call, and what happened, I don't know right there. Ello's turnovers for Navy nearly had another one there, and they have been costly. One fumble directly led to a touchdown, and the other set it up, both of them by that young man, Chris McCoy. He's had such a brilliant season, but Navy's been all over him today, and they'll go to Ben Fain. <laughs> Senior from Fort Worth, Texas. He was in for one series in the first half. And he's the better passer, and they're going to go to the air. Aster Heaven has a first down. Nate Cooper made the tackle. Yeah, down three touchdowns with two minutes left to go in the third quarter. They may have some success running the football, but it takes a lot of time. And I don't think you're going to be able to get three drives in this short of time just running the football. So Ben Fay comes in with his big arm to try to make something happen in a hurry. Godfrey Denson, the Notre Dame running back, who scored his second touchdown moments ago. 12 carries, 108 yards rushing, and his two scores. Now Fay on the keeper. Bay picks up about five yards on the carry. Ronaldo win and D. Cooper combined to stop him. Charlie Weatherby says Faye can run this offense as a running option quarterback. He's done it before, before McCoy arrived. Obviously not as nifty a runner or as fast as McCoy, and he is the better passer, but he's a handy enough runner to execute the offense in its original form. And here he goes again. Gets hit hard and driven back by Barry and Cooper. I'll tell you who's been visible today is that freshman Deke Cooper. He's all over the place, and they were worried about him. They were going to take Allen Ross in the corner, put him over at free safety, and bring in Devon Harper to man Rossum's spot. But 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 Deke is coming up with big plays all day. He's all over the field. And he's only a freshman. They worried about his inexperience, but he was a big study this week, obviously. Again, when you see those uh, shots there of empty seats, do not be deceived. There's a huge crowd here. This stadium seats 76,000 for hurling and Gaelic football. They did not sell a lot of the lower seats because of the much wider field. The views would have been impeded by the players standing on the far sidelines. And so uh, most of the crowd is on the near side of the field or our camera side, and it is packed. Now, I like this section over here to our right in the end zone. That's the standing room only section. They've been standing all game long, waving the Irish. They got a flag down there that's part Irish, part American, and they're waving it, and they're having a good time standing up in that end zone. Well, that says it all. Those are the uh, standing room seats for the uh, normal events here. Third down and about a yard. Looks like he got the first down. He's out to the 45-yard line of Navy. So ben Fay has a successful series and a first down. Navy can get a quick touchdown here. They'll only be down by two with pretty much a whole quarter left to go, and they'll still have a game of it. Evan comes wide to the left. Ross Scott goes out wide to the right, and we have reached. 24 seconds on the clock. Let's see. Timeout is called by Notre Dame. 24 seconds left in the third quarter. Lou just wants to regroup here, make sure his team doesn't give up a big play before the half or before the end of the quarter here. Bob 
Allen Davey, the defensive coordinator there, without the hat next to Lou Holtz. So we've got more football ahead here on CBS. Our doubleheader continues with regional coverage. Many of you will see the top-ranked Florida Gators against the Georgia Bulldogs at Florida. Some of you will see a Big East bash between Syracuse and the West Virginia Mountaineers. Big East action. And SEC action all ahead here on CBS Sports. Well, they're down by three touchdowns, but the Mids are still having fun, as are the Notre Dame fans here at Croke Park. Nearly 20,000, as we've been saying, uh, made their way over on various tour packages, and they've been having a great time all around Dublin. Some of them will stay a few extra days and tour the countryside. A special place to be and add a football game and a big Navy mascot. You can have a lot of fun right here at Croke Park. First down, Navy at their own 45. Faye, play action. He's got a man wide open. Corey Shim will score. Touchdown. The senior from Cheek Tobago, New York, near Buffalo. Gets Navy back into it. He had one earlier that was called back that really would have got Navy into it. But this one, again, as I said, if they can get a quick score, they'll be right back in the game. Only down by two touchdowns with a whole quarter to play. Tom Vanderhorst for the point after. And it is good. You know, Tim, Tim, we were just talking about Deke Cooper, what a great job he's doing in the secondary, but he let Corey Shem get behind him on that one for a long touchdown pass. Cooper just doesn't have enough speed to pick up on number 20 from Cheek to Walk. And look at those eyes. He says, I got a touchdown in Ireland. Corey Shem. Now, Cooper got cut up close to the line of scrimmage and could not recover. And Shem showing good speed. 55 yards for the score. Yeah, you know, we talked to Weatherby the other day, the coach of Navy, and we said, hey, how about this guy number 20? Every time he gets in the game, he doesn't play a lot, but whenever he gets in, he seems to come up with big plays, and that's the kind of guy he is. Give him a chance, and he'll get it in the end zone for you. So the Mids celebrate with more push-ups. 35 to 21. 80 yards in five plays, 209 on the clock. And ben Fay delivered the goods with his strong arm. Another short kickoff taken by Farmer, and Farmer gets to the 35-yard line. Navy must be worried about this return of Notre Dame and Allen Rawson, who took one back 99 yards earlier in the season, because right now they're just pooching the ball up in the air. Notre Dame's catching it at about the 30-yard line. They're not getting a big return, but they're getting great field position out of this. 11 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Ben Fay hit both of his passes on that drive for 68 passing yards en route to the 55-yard shot to Corey Shem. First down, Notre Dame at the 35-yard line. Slot right. Wallace pumps once, trying to find a man. He's got one. Johnson. Malcolm Johnson left open, gets inside the 25 of Navy. Robert Green made the stop, a 40-yard pass. Jervie Alota, the safety number six, got caught up with the pump fake right there. He bit on it, and Johnson runs by him. If the ball was thrown out in front, he would have been in the end zone, but it gave Robert Green a chance to come over and make the play and stop a sure touchdown. Pump fake by Ron Paulus really sucked up Jervie Alota. And we have reached the end of the third quarter with the score, Notre Dame 35, Navy 21. CBS Sports coverage of college football continues from Crook Park in Dublin after this message and a word from your local station. So I hear he's moving to the corner office. How's he do it? I don't know. 
Yesterday, he spent an hour with some life insurance guy. That's good time management? Well, Winters gave the agent his name. Winters? As in CEO? Mm-hmm. How's he doing? Have you heard from the quiet company? Northwestern Mutual Life. My sister did without for years to make this business work. Some morning she'd wake up, her back felt ready for a wrecking ball. She'd take two Tylenol, but hours later, pain had come back. She'd have to take more. She couldn't take it any longer. So her doctor said, try a leave. I could take just two a leave all day. With Tylenol, I was taking up to eight. So she tried a leave. It keeps her pain away up to 12 hours. It's meant a great deal to her. Who did your hair? A leave. All day strong, all day long. CBS. Welcome home. Congressional candidate James Walker was recently endorsed by the Express News over 35-year incumbent Henry B. Gonzalez. They agree James Walker is the best choice for Congress. I'm James Walker. My priorities include balancing the budget, strict sentencing of criminals, local control of welfare and education, and saving Kelly jobs. The Express News said Walker's concern and expertise about economic issues will be needed for the future. They also said he would break the typical political mold. Please vote James Walker for U.S. Congress. Serious damage to your engine can happen during startups when your engine is cold. So for a motor oil to protect your engine, it must get to work fast. Exxon Superflow Synthetic Blend does. It also protects better against thermal breakdown, yet is less expensive than full synthetics. A difference you can see. Exxon Superflow Synthetic Blend. Protection beyond conventional oils. Coffee tables? Two in tables and lamps from just $4.99. Southwest style. $5.99. Traditional style. $6.99. Or an overstuffed loose pillow book. $7.99. But that's not all. Take home a complete coffee and end table set. Just $49. bucks. spider A low $77. Bucks plus immediate delivery. And easy credit. Expect more for less price. Furniture Factory Warehouse. See you Monday morning on the area's only live 6 a.m. sportscast. CBS Sports coverage of college football is sponsored by Northwestern Mutual Life. Have you heard from the quiet company? Genuine Chevrolet, the cause more Americans trust. And by Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. Back in Croke Park, Notre Dame leads Navy by 14. I'm with Notre Dame. Athletic Director Mike Wadsworth, who was the Canadian ambassador to Ireland for five years. What inside information did you give Lou Holtz to help him here today? Well, actually, Lou's quite familiar with Ireland. His next passion to football is golf, so he's been here golfing a few times, knows something about the country, and, of course, I leave the football entirely to him. Well, you've got lots of friends and lots of fans here in Ireland today, and you were part of a very special moment earlier today for our own Tim Ryan, awarding him with an honorary monogram for the prestige and honor that he has brought to the University of Notre Dame. And Tim, we know you were surprised, but we all thought you handled it like a pro. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you very much, Andrea. And I, I sure was surprised. I was not expecting that honor at all. And I, I'm very flattered and privileged. And uh, it was a huge thrill. And I know a lot of people at CBS and at Notre Dame kept that a secret for many months, setting up this uh, this occasion here in Dublin. So uh, I thank everybody involved, and it was great. Michael Wadsworth is an old and dear friend of many years, and uh, of course was a great uh, football player during his tenure at Notre Dame. First down at the 25-yard line after that 40-yard pass from Ron Paulus to Malcolm Johnson, setting up Notre Dame again in scoring position. They get to the 23. Well, early on, with everybody slipping, we thought that this would be a low-scoring game, but with a quarter to go, uh, we've got 56 points up on the board by both teams. Second and eight. This is Denson trying to get wide. Can't tiptoe down the sideline as Robert Green steered him out. Well, he, he sure has sure footing out here. Everybody else slipping early. And watch him with Robert Green out here on the corner. He has him dead on 
and he able to just juke him a little bit and get out. He just ran out of real estate or he would have been in the end zone. Boy, this guy is explosive and he can cut. And he's got a great future with the Fighting Irish. No question about that. Autry Denson, the sophomore from Lauder Hill, Florida. They had him at defensive back. They had him at flanker. Lou Holtz wants him to block a little better. Return punts a little better, but you can't keep the ball out of his hands as a running back. This is Edwards, the big fullback, and he gets down to the five-yard line. Jervy Alota pulled him down. Jervy Alota, the junior from San Diego. Travis Cooley, good penetration, almost gets Edwards, but it's not able to make the tackle. Jervy Alota is a sure tackling defensive back. He got suckered up on that play by Malcolm Johnson on the long pass to get him down there, but he stopped the touchdown there. Got to be impressed with Alota, not only one of their fine players, but uh, what a class guy. He had a chance to meet that young man. And he is uh, just a real fine youngster. Second down and a long four. Notre Dame threatening again, and Denson gets down to the two. Tom Rhino, reserve linebacker number 42, the senior, made the stop. Gibbs for a New Jersey, his hometown. Notre Dame knocking on the door again at the two-yard line of Navy. You know, they average six, seven, 300 pounds across that front for Notre Dame. Navy shorter, but in situations like this, sometimes being a little bit shorter allows you to get leverage and get underneath and get low. It's critical in these goal line situations. Two fullbacks in now. Spencer leading for Edwards for Notre Dame. Spencer number 33 with Edwards in the tailback position. They give it to Edwards behind Spencer, and he dives and is in the end zone. Touchdown. Mark Edwards over the top. Clint Bruce tried his best to keep him out. But there was enough height, enough push from the sturdy Edwards. That's quite a matchup when you get Edwards on Bruce man-to-man. -man. Yeah, those are, those are two throwbacks, those guys right there. So the Irish widen their lead here at Croke Park in Dublin. Point after is no good. You know, we've talked about it all day. Edwards happy with his touchdown, but on the right side, Brad Williams again, the freshman converted from defensive tackle, makes the play on his man. And he allows Edwards to get in the end zone. Notre Dame counters with another touchdown. Misses the extra point, 41-21 Notre Dame. It takes 43 face muscles to make a frown. But if you drive a Lumina LS, you won't have to worry about using any of them. Because Lumina LS can go 100,000 miles before its first scheduled tune-up. No six-passenger car in its class can offer you as many standard safety features for the price. And best of all, you can afford it. The cars more Americans trust. Take a stroll down memory lane at the Pro Football Hall of Fame. You crushed my knee. It was your toes. You broke my ribs. It was your nose. Ah, yes. Oh. I remember it well. You sacked me once. I sacked it twice. In pouring rain. No, it was nice. Ah, yes. I but when you go, don't forget well. your Visa card, because the hall takes the NFL's best, but not American Express. Say, so Yanitsky. It's Butkus. Ah, oh, yes. Yeah. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. McDonald's new crispy chicken deluxe with an all-white meat breast filet, fresh lettuce, and tomato on a bakery soft roll. It's a grown-up reminder that you're never too old to drool. It's McDonald's with a grown-up taste. Huh? Is your danger sending the wrong signals? You're out. Get Selsun Power. Doctors recommend Selsun Blue number one, so don't send the wrong signals. Get Selsun Power. Monday, Cosby's in for a little probe. You can watch the entire thing if you want on this monitor. I can see the game. If it's played in your colon. I don't mind watching the Jets. CBS Big Comedy Monday. Well, here's a look at the famous Trinity College founded by Elizabeth I in 1592. 
that's home to the famous Book of Kells, the beautifully illustrated manuscript of the four Gospels, which dates from the 8th century, and thousands of tourists each year go in to see the Book of Kells and wander around beautiful Trinity College, one of the outstanding academic institutions in the world. And in fact, among the many activities going on here this week, Members of uh, the International Board of Trustees at the University of Notre Dame are here uh, formulating plans to open a campus here in Dublin, Ireland. And so there's been lots of academic activity uh, this week as well as football activity. Michael Wadsworth, former Canadian ambassador to Ireland, has been involved in those discussions. And the kickoff by Sanson is taken by Will Smith at about the 12-yard line of Navy. And he brings it up close to the 30. And the midshipman will try to get something going here. Down by 20 with 12.46 to play. Kevin Coretta, reserve tight end, made the stop. 65 yards and six plays. Edwards takes it in from one yard up. Well, this Navy team is not built to come back from 20-point deficits, but Ben Fay in the game at quarterback. He is their thrower. And you saw in the last drive, he came up with a big play to Corey Shem. 20 points is a big, big turnaround for Navy to try to come back for from. In just in 15 minutes of play remaining, tall order, but Faye will give it a go. And this time he is set. LeBron Cobbins blasting in, the senior from Kansas City, Kansas. Yeah, he's their leading tackler, Cobbins. Right now, Notre Dame wants to tee off. They know the only way for Navy to get back into this game is via the pass. Cobbins comes in, gets the sack. See Cobbins going for the ball on the play. Good effort by Faye to hang on. Loss of two, second and 12. This is Canada. Canada breaks loose for a first down to midfield. Tim Canada, the junior, shows good speed from that fullback spot, a 23-yard game. Yeah, what Notre Dame has done, something we talked about earlier, they took out D. Cooper that got burned for the touchdown. They brought in Deveron Harper to man Allen Rawson's corner spot. Rawson moves to free safety, anticipating Navy throwing the football. Boy, you make one mistake on a Lou Holtz team, and you're, <laughs> you're on the pine for a while. On the bench, in the dog. <laughs> we had just finished saying how well the freshmen have been playing through the game, but he did make a big, big mistake on the shim play. Pickup of about five for Omar Nelson. Navy off to a bad start in rushing yards. They've cranked it up to 170 after a slow start in the first half. You can see in the born to run department this season, those numbers. Notre Dame had only 67 against Air Force in the loss, and when they rush well, as those numbers indicate, they win. They had a huge day against Washington. Very good football team, the Huskies. Second and eight. And Bay is sacked. minutes to go in the game Lots of a couple you're down by 20 points I don't know how long you can afford to keep continue running the option play even though that's their bread and butter they need to get the ball upfield Notre Dame however is playing it loose they've got four defensive backs that are off the line of scrimmage quite a bit leaves third and eight Bay was right at the line of scrimmage where they nailed him so it's third and eight Short drop from Fay intended for Butts. LeBron Butts couldn't get to the ball off the mark. Cobbins and Corey Miner putting pressure on Fay that time. Miner's been all over the field all day long. Defensively, he's got to be the star from Notre Dame today. No doubt. He's been outstanding, and it looks like the game plan was just tailored for him to stay on those quarterbacks. He's done it effectively from each side of the ball. They flop him right and left. He has excellent speed, and he's been in there all day. They're going forward on fourth down with this big deficit in the fourth quarter. And it's complete. Ross Scott has a first down Navy. The senior from Hawkinsville, Georgia. In the Notre Dame territory at the 35-yard line. 
will keep fighting all day long until the final gun sounds. They think they're still in it. Great pass by Faye, avoiding some fingertips of the Notre Dame players. Rossum put the hit on him. First down, Navy. Faye, straight drop, just got it off. This one picked up on the deflection, and it's Corey Miner. traffic the ball popped up and Corey Miner ranging all the way back from a rush position is there to catch the deflected ball and there's an injured fighting Irish defensive back down yeah Bert Berry gets in on the quarterback throws into triple coverage does Ben Fay and watch Corey Miner he makes sacks he jumps up over piles intercepts the ball and he can run he's a future star for this team He'll buy anything. Good morning, sweetheart. Good morning. What? Like last week, he wanted to spend $700 on a satellite dish. A gadget guy. So I called Prime Star. Prime Star's a service, so there's no equipment to buy. You get the dish, digital picture and sound, and it starts at about a dollar a day. He's so happy with Prime Star, he got me these. For the best value in satellite TV, call 1 800 Prime Star or visit your local Radio Shack. So where's our leader? She'll be here. She's meeting with someone about her personal finances. Wait a minute. The chief financial officer needs financial help. From whom? I think it's her life insurance agent. Really? So what's the agent's name? Have you heard about Northwestern Mutual Life's college internship? I do not drive to work. I do not drive to get from point A to point B. I do not drive to run away from the world. I just love to drive. The new 1996 Monte Carlo. Personal space from genuine Chevrolet. The car's more Americans trust. Powerful drug cartel holds America hostage with the ultimate killing machine. Only Chuck Norris can stop them. Let's do it, man to man. On Walker CBS tonight. Well, Corey Miner picking off that pass on a deflection. Alan Rossum was down briefly, but got up and uh, off the field under his own power. Notre Dame has the ball at their own 40-yard line after a 21-yard return by Miner. What a day that young man has had. So Notre Dame in possession and leading by 20, 41 to 21. Draw play for Denson, and Navy responds to that one, reading it all the way and dropping him for a loss. Notre Dame now is content with bleeding the time off the clock. Nine minutes and 40 seconds left in this football game. Up 20 points. Very difficult for a run-oriented team to make up the difference in this short of time. Ron Paulus knows it. He's happy to keep the ball on the ground and have this game go in his favor. Sakaya champion comes in at wide receiver for Emmett Mosley, champion number 18. And this is champion. Rashad Smith and Jerry Alota prevent the score as the senior from Tyler, Texas, shows some speed. You'd, be, you'd think that Notre Dame be content just running the ball up the middle, knock some time off the clock, but Lou Holt said, hey, let's do something tricky. They won't expect it and get a big play, and let's get another score and keep this thing or put it out of reach. They spot it at the 22-yard line of the Naval Academy. Sakaya Champion comes up with a 39-yard run on the end around. And we have an injury. Timeout at the moment. Ron Paulus, 6 of 11 passing for 90 yards today. And the running attack of Notre Dame uh, continues to get better as the game goes on. And a 39-yard run there by Champion, the wide receiver. 
Jervia Loda over on the sidelines. And we haven't mentioned that both benches are on the same side of the field. This is a very unusual thing, especially for the players coming off the field, crisscrossing each other. But they've been well behaved so far today. There hasn't been any skirmishes uh, on the sidelines. Jervia Loda looks like he's got a bit of a cramp there, the way they were working his leg. He's walking it off now. He's a big play guy for that Navy defense, and they sure need him. Good player, good guy, good player. Yes, the reason they're over there and all standing up along those sidelines is that the uh, Irish football teams use dugouts, similar to baseball dugouts, but they're a long way from the sideline because they play on a much bigger playing surface, so that wouldn't have worked for these American college teams. And so the only way for this to work logistically to keep them near the sideline so they could get in and out on substitution is to have both benches on the same side of the field. And thus allow spectator view. As we said, some of those lower seats were not sold for that reason. And that is Randy Kinder, number 25, the senior who started the game at running back, but Audrey Denson got in there and remain for most of the game. We have 8.52 to go here in the final quarter. Notre Dame deep in Navy territory again at the 17 with a second and six. Kinder, 2,000 yards rushing in his career and a nearly a six yard per carry average. He missed two games early in the season with a quad injury and that opened the door for Denson. Fisher on the tackle and a first down fighting Irish. Jason Snyder number 97 missed ran right by Mark Edwards stuck out his left arm but couldn't make the stop. Edwards gets down to the 10 yard line and Navy Notre Dame trying to put this one away with another score. Kevin Coretta comes in at tight end number 40. Make it double tight on this formation. First and goal from the 10. Kinder, Kinder breaks loose and battles his way almost to the goal line. Down to the one yard line, Randy Kinder. Sean Andrews made the stop. Navy missing tackles all over the place right now. Coming right at us, Poulter, Hogfell, they both had shots at Kinder, but he just gets going upfield, close to another touchdown for the Fighting Irish. Spencer the fullback, Kinder the tailback. Second and goal. Stopped short. The ball nearly came loose. I think he recovered it himself. It was knocked loose by Rashad Smith. Do you think if he lost that ball, he would have been playing the next series with Lou Holtz? We would have seen Autry Denson back in the game. The ball's laid on the field. Rashad Smith with a big hit. You know, I don't think he had a, a real good grab from Paulus on the handoff. That didn't really have it in good position. Smith came in quickly and knocked it loose. Notre Dame's possession, third and goal from the one. And this is Edwards. Touchdown. Third touchdown of the day for Mark Edwards. Two in this fourth quarter. Fighting Irish of Notre Dame, embarrassed by their defeat at the hands of Air Force two weeks ago, used the bye week to get ready to come over to Ireland and make sure that they were not beaten by a service academy in consecutive games. And they're going for two points. Edwards is stopped short of the goal line. Well, there's an example of this Navy fighting spirit. They simply were not going to be giving up a two-point conversion try in a score that is already 47 to 21. The 
Value Drive is on during Oldsmobile's Value Drive sales event. Exceptional quality and value. That's 88 by Oldsmobile. J.D. Power and Associates' best premium midsize car in initial quality. For a limited time, Oldsmobile is clearing out all remaining 96s. And with special factory-to-retailer incentives on new 97 models, you have an even greater opportunity to save. 88 by Oldsmobile. The time to buy is now. The Value Drive is on. See your Oldsmobile retailer today. Not crazy about this artificial turf. Looks like shag carpeting. Got no gift. No big deal. After all, this is American. We play football no matter what. Lizards, floods, tropical storms, I've seen it all. And let me tell you this. If a meteorite hit the earth tomorrow, you just wait for the darn thing to cool off, draw a field in the ashes, run it in for six points, and spike it to the end zone. Ow! You've been thinking about getting a digital satellite dish. And thinking. And thinking some more. Well, think about this. The people at Radio Shack can answer your questions. Plus, now they've got great deals. Own an RCA brand DSS dish with programming for about a dollar a day plus installation. Up to 200 channels of select movies and sports available on USSB and DirecTV. Think about it. Better yet, stop thinking about it. Radio Shack, you've got questions, we've got answers. Monday, it's Murphy's worst nightmare come true, and look who's in it. PMBS, post-Murphy Brown syndrome. <laughs> Revenge of the Secretary, CBS, Big Comedy Monday. <laughs> Football doubleheader continues with regional coverage. Many of you will see top-ranked Florida against the Georgia Bulldogs. And some of you will see the Big East Bash between the Syracuse Orangemen and West Virginia. That's all next here on CBS Sports Coverage of College Football. And here in Dublin, Ireland, Notre Dame leading 47-21, 6.41 to go. And you got to love Phil McConkie as an alumnus of the Navy midshipmen that uh, despite the fact that they're getting walloped here by Notre Dame, they would not give up a two-point conversion. They don't give up anything. No, they won't give up until that final gun. In fact, talk to guys that play in the NFL, guys I played with and against. They said at Notre Dame, they said they hated playing against Navy. They'd be up by 50 points, and Navy keeps coming at them right for the last second. Rico Hunter, the deep man. Takes it at the eight-yard line. And he is clotheslined at the 20 by Kevin Coretta, reserve tight end. Well, they did bring Bill Legault, the 28th the mascot. All these years later, Bill makes the trip to Dublin. 28th and the skinniest goat I've ever seen. <laughs> they used to have these big old rams come out, run around. They better feed this thing some Irish potatoes and fatten them up if they bring them back to the States. <laughs> Maybe they found them in a farm field here in Dublin. They may have. He may be a temporary goat. <laughs> Substitute goat. First down from the 20-yard line. Ben Fay up the middle. That's complete. The Ross Scott, the senior from Hawkinsville, Georgia. And a first down Navy out at their 40-yard line. Notre Dame's not going to let Navy beat them deep. There's people in the intermary, intermary zone, so what's going to happen right now is Navy's going to get behind the first wave in front of the second wave of defenders for Notre Dame and try to come up with passes just like that. They hit his first two. He's now three of six. He's coming in to replace McCoy. He played one series in the first half. Keep it on the ground in Nelson. Nelson battles his way for about seven, maybe eight. Seven-yard pickup for Nelson. Maiden, the nose tackle, and Alan Rossum coming up from the secondary on the stop. Alton Maiden, the nose guard, 281 pounds out of Dallas, Texas, and he wears number 42. I don't know what it is with these guys and these numbers, but... A number 42 for a nose guard, 282 pounds. It doesn't seem to fit, Tim. <laughs> I love the way these numbers really bother you. And you don't like the single digits on the linebackers No, no, either, not no. at all. <laughs> <laughs> that is Shem. He has a touchdown to his credit today and a long pass play. This time they bring him out of the slot back position on the run, and Ivory Covington forced him out of bounds. He lost him on the play. Third down and six. 
Navy's had enough of those single digits at that linebacking core, especially with number four, Corey Miner, all day long. He's hassled Navy's triple option run and shoot offense. Irish have reserve linebacker Bill Waggesey, number 43, a senior from Springfield, Missouri, in the game. Fay intended for Scott, but too high and complete. And it'll be another fourth down, and we expect Navy will go. 5.33 to play. Well, now it looks like the punting unit is coming on the field. You gotta like the way Alan Rawson plays football, number 15. About five foot seven, probably at the most. They got him listening at five eight, but he's all over the place. They call him the Energizer Bunny. The guy's all over the field. He, he was clocked in the four twos a couple times, and that is as fast as any human being can motor. Wasn't too impressed with Irish food. Didn't try the salmon or the oysters. He went to a local uh, hamburger joint that you can get in our country. Bounces into the end zone. The punt. Um, and it'll be a first down at the 20-yard line. A 56-yard punt. Notre Dame will start from the 21 we return. Like that account I told you about? He's great. Helped out, huh? Did me a huge favor. What was that? Gave my name to his life insurance agent. for me. Have you heard from the Quiet Company? Northwestern Mutual Life. Australia's Great Barrier Reef. You don't need fins to swim under it. You don't need wings to fly over it. You don't need four legs to run through it. But you just might need to bring this. Because Reef Watch Air Tours, Wild Track Jeep Safaris, and Pro Sail Schooners will take you on the ride of your life. But they won't take American Express. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. The Value Drive is on during Oldsmobile's Value Drive sales event. Exceptional quality and value. That's 88 by Oldsmobile. J.D. Power and Associates' best premium mid-sized car in initial quality. For a limited time, Oldsmobile is clearing out all remaining 96s. And with special factory-to-retailer incentives on new 97 models, you have an even greater opportunity to save. 88 by Oldsmobile. The time to buy is now. The Value Drive is on. See your Oldsmobile retailer today. Christiana Amanpour, welcome to 60 Minutes. Angela Lansbury, welcome back to Sunday Night. The reporter and the detective doing what they do best, Sunday on 60 Minutes. Back in action at the 20-yard line here at Croke Park, and Jarius Jackson, the sophomore quarterback, has come in for Notre Dame. He's from Tupelo, Mississippi. 6'1", 218-pounder. I've seen a lot of action this season behind Ron Paulus. His give is to Robert Farmer and the senior. Bolingbrook, Illinois, picks up a first down. Over the 30-yard line. Right at the 30 will spot it. We didn't talk much about Ron Paulus. He had a quiet afternoon, 6 out of 11, very efficient. He threw a touchdown pass. And, you know, we talked to him the other day. What a great kid. You know he's got to be frustrated with the two losses this year. A lot was expected out of him, but he was in a tough situation. Anything short of a couple national championships, and they were going to get on him. On first down, Spencer, sophomore fullback from Monroe, Louisiana. Up about four. The Irish with a number of their second team members in the lineup. Tim Ritter is at left tackle number 70, sophomore from Omaha, Nebraska. Guy Nelson in at wide receiver number nine. Luke Pettigrew at the right tackle number 54. This is Farmer. Farmer has a first down at the 40-yard line. Notre Dame substituting also up front. 
Brad Williams, number 77, sat down. We talked about him earlier. He was the freshman defensive tackle that they switched to right guard, starting right guard for this game. Only a couple days of practice. But one thing, Tim, when they were down towards the end zone, they ran to the right side, right over Brad Williams' side. He's got to be a happy young man. For him to come through today in this kind of fashion is just an unbelievable feat for a football player. Did a fine job, and they ran behind him a lot. Just short of the first down, it's third and about a half yard, and Farmer gets it, and then some. Farmer in a foot race with Aluda, and Farmer loses the race, but gets inside the five-yard line. Both players slow to get up. 58 yards. They're looking for more, just straight up the middle. Farmer shows some speed, but it's a, again, it's Jervie Aloda that saves a touchdown for Navy. Just keep your head looking straight up field, big fella, and you might get in. Every time you turn your head, it's got to slow you down a little bit. But inside the five-yard line, a big run by Farmer. Senior from Bolingbrook, Illinois. Gets it to the three-yard line of Navy. And uh, Alota goes limping to the Navy bench. What a game he's had. Hurt himself on that saving tackle of Robert Farmer. And again, just as another symbol and example of no quit. Even though uh, the game is no longer in doubt, Alota went down the sideline, refusing to let Farmer make it to the end zone. 47 to 21 the score. 318 to play. Notre Dame once again close to that end zone. The second unit primarily on the field for the Fighting Irish. John Sarasani at tight end. Kevin Coretta at the other double tight here in the short yardage situation. Maybe a yard. David Quist, who plays uh, both offense and defense for the Fighting Irish, is setting some action. He's at right guard. Also plays uh, some offensive center and plays goal line defense. So he's out there getting some time. Jamie Spencer for the touchdown. Spencer, the sophomore from Monroe, Louisiana. And the Irish widen their lead into the 50s we go with 2.19 to play. Well, they kept it on the ground with their second unit, but that big run by Farmer of 58 yards set up yet another Notre Dame touchdown. Got an injury in the end zone for Navy. Can't make him out from, from here right now, but this is what Lou Holtz wanted to do. Travis Cooley down right now for Navy. Lou Holtz wanted to play smash mouth power football, and that's what he got out of his team. Coming off that loss at Air Force, they couldn't find a way to run against Air Force, but they sure found a way to run this afternoon against Navy. 80 yards and six plays. The touchdown by Jamie Spencer. Notre Dame uh, with two losses, uh, doubtful for a big bowl appearance. Uh, the bowl alliance seems to be out of reach, although uh, things could happen in the final weeks of the season that could open that up for the Fighting Irish. But certainly, as we said at the outset of this game, uh, they could not handle a second loss to a service academy. And uh, they have really taken it out on Navy today, the uh, loss to Air Force. The midshipmen paid the price here in Dublin, Ireland this afternoon, which I know hurts you, uh, Phil, uh, but it's going to be 33 years now <laughs> since uh, Navy defeated Notre Dame. There's always next year. <laughs> That's right. Scott Palumbo will attempt the point after for Notre Dame, getting a chance here, replacing Sanson. Sanson having missed his last point after, I guess uh, with Lou, that's enough. To <laughs> Scott Palumbo gets a try. <laughs> and, he, and he hits it. 2.19 to play. 
Notre Dame 54 to 21. So where's our leader? She'll be here. She's meeting with someone about her personal finances. Wait a minute. The chief financial officer needs financial help. From whom? I think it's her life insurance agent. Really? So, what's the agent's name? When you find out, let me know. Have you heard from the quiet company? Northwestern Mutual Life. I mean, I love my husband, but he'll buy anything. Good morning, sweetheart. Good morning. What? Like, last week, he wanted to spend $700 on a satellite dish. A gadget guy. So I called Prime Star. Prime Star's a service, so there's no equipment to buy. You get the dish, digital picture and sound, and it starts at about a dollar a day. He's so happy with Prime Star, he got me these. For the best value in satellite TV, call 1-800-PRIME-STAR or visit your local Radio Shack. 219 to play here in beautiful Dublin, Ireland. A dry day. Not one of the soft days. The Irish uh, call, call when the rain comes. Uh, no uh, rain today. A soggy field. Players had some uh, trouble with it early on. But everybody in the stands has stayed dry here this afternoon. Notre Dame fans, Navy fans, 20,000 strong coming over from the United States. Some expats and Notre Dame fans from the continent joining these fans here today, along with approximately 25,000 locals. Scott Palumbo will kick it off for Notre Dame. And it's taken by Hunter at the 14-yard line. Hunter trying to get some running room, gets over the 30 and is buried there. Lots more college football action ahead here on CBS. In the SEC, top-ranked Florida, they look like they might be national championship material. They'll take on Florida, take on Georgia at home. Or some of you will see Syracuse and West Virginia in Big East action all next here on CBS Sports. Navy, first down at their own 32-yard line. Ben Fay, four of eight for 99 yards passing. Keeps it on the option. Struggles for close to five yards. You know, with this 54 points up on the board, you may wonder, well, why is he trying to run up the score? But he's really not. To defend Lou Holtz right here, he's got a second and third unit in on offense. Hey, and these guys want to play. They're looking at next year. They're looking at more playing time. These are eager young men, and they want to get the ball in the end zone. So he's kept it on the ground, doing what I guess you're supposed to do when you're up by that many points. But fortunately for the guys playing for him on offense, they punched one in. Navy trying to get some more points of their own here on the waning minutes of the game. Second and six, fail throw it. And it's complete to Shem. Good looking receiver, Corey Shem. Fine hands, good speed. Gets to the 40 yard line. He's going to have a third and two. Well, Navy will fall to five and two. But uh, no matter what happens the rest of the way, uh, what a job Charlie Weatherby has done uh, with this. Navy squad after uh, their years of struggles. Looks like he has the program turned around, Phil. One more win and they'll have their first winning season, I think, since 1982. So they've got four more games after this one and they should get it. On third and a long yard, Fay keeps and appears to have the first down. Navy has uh, Delaware, Tulane at home, and then Georgia Tech at Tech. And they finish up in a classic right here on CBS, Army-Navy, December 7th, with the Commander-in-Chief's trophy at stake in that one. First down at the 42-yard line. Navy felt like they were prepared this year to end that long streak, especially what Air Force did to Notre Dame a couple weeks ago, but give credit to Notre Dame. They had two weeks to prepare for this offense, and they sure did a good job preventing Navy from winning this game. Bay rolling left, wants to go deep. He's got a man open, Heaven, a diving catch by Aster Heaven. Good job. Sliding down inside the 15 of Notre Dame. That ball was out in front of him. He would have kept his feet and gotten the end zone. Fay had to throw running to his left, a right-hander. 
43 yards. He got it downfield to Astor Heaven, and Navy takes timeout. With 18 seconds left, they want another score. You gotta love this. They're at the 16-yard line of Notre Dame. Notre Dame with their second team defense on the field. Ben Fay and the offense want to push it in for another Navy score. Boy, the first couple series this afternoon with this wet field, people slipping and sliding all over the place. We didn't think we'd see many touchdowns at all, but this has been a scoring fest this afternoon, especially if Navy punches this one in to get 28 points. Antoine Jones is in on the nose for Notre Dame, number 85. Sophomore from Pequa, Ohio. Linebacker Lamont Bryan, number 53, a sophomore from Georgetown, South Carolina. In come some uh, new substitutions. Kurt Belisle, a junior from Bradley, Illinois, and on the defensive front. First down, Navy. Fay on the drop. Gets some pressure and has to throw it away. Second down with 14 seconds on the clock. Close to intentional grounding that time. Bobby Howard, reserve linebacker, had the pressure, number 27. He's a sophomore from Rand, West Virginia. Notre Dame uh, rushed for 299 yards today on 43 carries into the end zone. Incomplete, intended for heaven. Navy rushed for 187 yards today, but they struggled in the first half. Before they got it moving on the ground, it was too late. Ty Good knocked that ball away. Right now, Navy with a win over Air Force. Army left on the schedule. They'd love to have a winning season and win the Commander in Chief's trophy. That goes to the Service Academy team that beats the other two, has a winning record outright. If there's a tie, it remains at the school from the previous year. So if Navy beats Army, they get the Commanders in Chief's trophy for the first time in many, many years. On third and 10, Fay gets some time into the end zone, and it's Corey Shem touchdown. With five seconds left, Shem gets his second touchdown. Fay with the connection again. The Navy fans, despite this scoreboard, they gotta love that. Good protection for Ben Fay. He starts to look to the left. He's got a guy open in the middle of the field. Shem just comes all the way across the field, gets lost in the shuffle. Nobody around him. He even looked up. He had time to look up to see how much territory or real estate he had left and came back for the ball to catch it for a touchdown. Now he is a fine-looking player. Corey Shem runs great routes. He's got good speed. Beautiful hands. Soft hands of quarterbacks like to find out there and their receivers. 68 yards and seven plays. They'll go for two. Fay just gets it away and it's too high this time. Intended for Shem. And Shem is just a football player. All he does is make plays every time he's in there. Mark Edwards, a happy guy. Five seconds remain. Well, tonight on CBS, welcome home to America's Night of Television. Don't miss our all-new episodes of Dr. Quinn, Medicine Woman, Early Edition, one of the fine new series on television, and Walker, Texas Ranger. That's all tonight on CBS. I think a lot of people have headed out of the stadium. They've got flights back to the United States with only 10,000 hotel rooms here in Ireland. They staggered the visit. People flew in this morning with their luggage, came straight to the stadium. They'll stay all this week. The people that were here last week, they'll vacate right now and go to the airport on their way back home. And there's a scene, the midshipmen here in Dublin, Ireland, celebrating the touchdown, a smile on the face of Ron Paulus, the winning Notre Dame quarterback. Moments before, and uh, next week, the Fighting Irish will be back here on CBS taking on Boston College. There's Lou Holtz. You'd think he's down uh, 54 to 27 here. <laughs> he plays every play right to the end. 
no smiles until it's all over. Victory is secured, and then usually he'll find some things wrong in the performance anyway. But he's got to be happy at the way his team rebounded from the loss to Air Force. And here's a chance for Jamie Spencer, one man to beat on the onside kick, and he's forced out of bounds at the 20-yard line. Well, Navy, again, just on the last play, they try to get possession of the ball, and there's actually still one second left. So Charlie Weatherby, talk about battling to the end. They wanted the ball with an onside kick, but the bounce came right to Spencer, and he uh, nearly went the distance. And Notre Dame will have the final play from the 20-yard line of Navy. I like this coach, Charlie Weatherby. I like his attitude, I like his spirit, and, Notre and certainly Navy fans like his record despite the loss today. Now he came in and revived this program that had been down for many years. Everybody associated with the Naval Academy has got to be happy with Charlie Weatherby, the job he's done in his football team. And that'll do it. For the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. Defeat the midshipmen of Navy here at Coke Park in Dublin, Ireland, 54 to 27. The 33rd straight win over Navy, establishing a new record in the NCAA for a series between two teams. This is the oldest intersectional rivalry in the country. And the mascot, the Irish Times, called Darby O'Gill, can properly celebrate. And the two coaches sharing their comments here at the end of the game. So for Andrea